I I, I want to stay there, bro, because I want to, because I want to, you, you, you the football person, you know what I'm saying? I want to know what you think about it. I want to hear your input. I when you said, when you said they changed the culture, I asked you how so, because I want to know how you, I said, I, I want to know how you're changing the culture. I mean, on a football standpoint of what I said before I even went down what Dion was doing specifically, if you are any kind of sports person and you think he's going to come into Colorado, move conferences from where he was at to the Big 12 and be a contender for a national championship in two years, you smoking drugs, bro. You don't know sports. You don't know how to put teams together. You don't know any of that shit. I would assume you do because you are a sports guy. So I would assume that you understand that there is a way to build a program and that takes time. It's not going to happen overnight, especially when you're moving to a, a power conference and you don't have necessarily power conference players in every position. You don't have the pipeline to compete with some of these power conference schools. You don't have the the, the pipeline to compete with, with the Texas is in the, in the, in the organs in the, in the USC's and all of that shit. We saw that last season. We know that. I mean, we still know that his O line and D line ain't up to par to compete with some of these bigger schools. We know that, but he brought in coaches to help with that. He brought in Sep. He brings in To. They did some better recruiting and skill positions. They don't have an issue with skill positions. We know that. He changes the culture by some of the coaches he brings in that are that are, that are pushing the same line that he's pushing. He's pushing empowerment for these young men first, academics first. That's why he he let a five star recruit go leave. Uh, Carmani McLean, and then he got bashed just for Carmani McLean to go to the new school, which I think is Florida. And the same shit that they complained about in Colorado, they complained about in Florida. Those are the things I was saying. But again, I, th that's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. Okay. So, two questions. Two things. No, one thing. One thing. One thing. Does that ring true for all schools, or just, or just? Is it your, you think that's, do you that's feel the, that way about all I feel schools? that way about everything. I feel that way about the new coach at Michigan who took over for Harbaugh, who came in as a new coach. Yes, Michigan is a power comfort school who just came off of a national championship, yeah. but he still has to yeah. have time to build his team and his program the way he wants to and needs to build it. Now, he's starting from a place of privilege because he is coming into a position where he has a national championship contending team. But just like when, when who is this, Chris Dishman or whoever, who, who, who took over TSU? Dishman. When he comes in, uh, Chris uh, he has to build his team, his roster, his coaches, the way he, he wants to do it, to build the program the way he wants to build the programs, to bring in who he wants to, to build whatever kind of program he wants to build. It's like that on every level. And look, Nick Saban, when Nick Saban went to LSU, he didn't win every year. It took him a couple of years to build his program to where he needed to be before he started winning national championships in LSU. Same thing with Bama. So, yeah, why do why 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 do some people expect Prom to come in and in one year, two years, be national champion contenders? Now, if you have an issue with the flash and all of that and the hype, that's one thing. But he's Deion Sanders. He's going to bring in hype. He's going to bring in flash. He's bringing in Dallas, Colorado. I, that's half the reason why Colorado wanted Deion there and every other school that was that, that wanted his services because of the eyes he's going to bring on the program just because of his name. Well, I, I'm not talking about the flash. I haven't mentioned anything about the flash. Or I didn't say you did. I'm just speaking I'm on, just on, on, on the program. I know what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, just for clarity. I, I, I didn't put those caveats on there. What I didn't I'm say you saying, did. It wasn't I'm, for me I'm, to say what you said. I just brought to. it up as, as, as a talking point. I didn't say you said anything about it. My commentary had nothing to do with your thoughts. Yeah. yeah I'm not. I'm, okay. So, so, so as I'm asking you, which thing about Colorado. I mean, they're one and one. So if you're asking me after week two, well, no, I'm, I'm saying if you asking me what I feel about Colorado after week two, they're one and one. They 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 lost. Uh, mm -hmm. No, they're three and one. No, they're two and one. They barely beat the school they're supposed to beat. They lost to uh, two and one. they 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 two and one because they barely beat a school for week one that they were supposed to beat. Uh, they lost to mm -hmm. to Kentucky. Yeah. No, not Kentucky. They lost to to Kansas. Nebraska. No, no, Nebraska. Nebraska. They lost to Nebraska, Nebraska. bro. They lost. They they lost to Nebraska. Pat Mahomes' cousin, who was mm -hmm. Pat Mahomish. They lost to Nebraska, and they barely won a rivalry game, bro. 
So I mean, okay, they two and one. Now if they if they if they if they yeah. end the season sub five hundred, you can ask so, me then, and then we have a conversation. But at two and one, I mean, what 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 am I what what am I supposed to? What kind of criticism am, am I supposed to say? They still can't protect Shador like they needed to. Shiloh needs to stop trying to be a uh, uh, see, and that and that's Lott. the issue. I mean, but those those See, are players. Kind of that ain't Dion. Those are players. So so Shiloh needs to stop trying to play like Ronnie Light and hit everybody. Like nah, nigga. But that's also that's that's coaching as well. What I'm saying is, you can't. But that's but that's it's but hold on, to, time to out. Take, but that to, but time out. Whoa, whoa, time out. Whoa. But see, that's tough though because that's like saying Steph Curry don't shoot three and that's the best thing you do. So that's Shiloh Sanders' game. A part of a big part of Shiloh Sanders' game is the aggressive tackling and play. So. He plays at 100 miles an hour. It's like Bob Sanders played at 100 miles an hour, but he was a little dude. I mean, it's like, you know what I'm saying? CJ Stroud, he runs out the pocket and, and tries to avoid hits. Like, that's part of their game. So, yes, they need to protect Shador but better. As a part of that also is making sure I can recruit better and get better O-linemen, which they did, but they still need work. And again, how do you... Yeah, bro. If I'm improved from year one to year two, I improve. Year two to year three, I improve. But this shit ain't finna happen overnight. Well. Name several it, times. Name it. Name it. But that's not, that's not the issue. No, no, no. I'm, no, it is the Ohio. issue because I, I would like to. I, no, no, no. The reason why I went. Miami, Ohio. I would say name it. Naming it. Who? Miami, Ohio. What from, year did they flip? Four and eleven. They they flipped from. The one year, I think that was 2011. They were they were four and something. The next year they were eleven. They were twelve. And, so so what? So all right, question, question. So let me ask you What was what was Colorado's yeah. record last year? Yeah, uh, they were below 500. They were like four and something. So I feel five like I feel like the 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 appropriate time to have this question of what do I truly feel about Colorado this season would be. A, if yeah. they haven't, it, A, if they are at a point where they're not going to finish any better than last season or have any improvement, yeah. and and B, at the end of the season. Like at two and one, I can't I give you, I, at two and one, I can't give you an assessment that they're better or worse than they were last year. I can't. We we got it. We got it. We got it. We, we I mean, a bigger guess, sample size. But what I'm saying is, if I'm having the exact same issues that I had last year, I'm having the exact same issues, and I came into the year knowing that it's like it's like any sports team. If we had trouble, if the Cowboys had problems stopping the run last year, and we come back the next year, and the first two games we get our, we get ran through the same way, where well, we can you can make an assumption that they didn't do the right things in the off season, and what they're doing currently is not going to uh, uh, produce. Positive outcomes. I mean, but we gotta see the how they. We gotta see how they the make. We, we gotta. We gotta see how they make make uh, in season adjustments. So, let's see next week. Let's see if they get the ball ran down their throat for the next two weeks. And if that happens, then that means the addition of Warren Sapp and some of these other guys on the defensive end didn't help. And it also means that that they're not doing on a coaching side the proper adjustments mid season that they need to do. I mean, but at, at two and one, I mean, damn. But, but, I, I can but, see, but I can I, see if but, they were, I can see if they were five games in. If they were five games in and they were one and four, yeah, you can ask me this question and we can have this nah. conversation. But two and one, like nah. game three, yeah, you can do it. I don't think it's you a big enough because... sample size to. I don't think it's a big enough sample size to go in and and attempt to to criticize a program in year two. That's my thing. Have they played any? Have they played any powerhouses? No, not really. I mean, essentially, so they beat, they, if, essentially they beat the two teams they were supposed to, and they lost to a team that 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 you know what I'm saying that they were fairly matched to. What I'm saying is they haven't played any powerhouse team, any any national contending or even any any conference contending teams. They played mediocre to bad teams, and they haven't had a, a good showing yet. I don't know and how I don't know how mediocre. In, I don't know how mediocre. Uh, uh, Nebraska, Nebraska is Nebraska is not mediocre. Nebraska's, Nebraska Nebraska has Nebraska mediocre. has historically been a a decent. They used to be a power a powerhouse uh, school, and actually they got oh, yeah. a top tier quarterback. Ago. 
It was more like 10 years ago. And they got a top-tier quarterback, to be honest with you. They got like an NFL caliber quarterback on the team. So, I mean, it's, no, it's, it's still Nebraska. I mean, tell, oh, okay. And hey, you know what? That's, I'm, I'm glad you said that. So, hold on. I'm glad you said that. So, what I'm saying is, why, why, and this is, this is my criticism of, of, of QB play, looking at QBs in college, playing against non-NFL or non-pro, pro, not powerhouse programs, Historically, good quarterbacks make up for bad lines. That's not true. Uh, if you go out, man, what kind of line did uh, Andre Ware have, or Doug Flutie, or Steve uh, 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 Young, or 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 Caleb or Caleb Williams, or or they didn't Don't have no Caleb Williams. Lines. Did you not see that USC line last year, nigga. Everybody was three ten and up. Are, what are you talking about? Caleb Williams at USC? He, so he went, so he went, are you serious? He wasn't sacked. He, went, he, went, he didn't have one of the highest sack rates last year? Nigga, because he rolls out the pocket, just like Shador has a high sack, sack rate because he holds on to the ball. Like I'm saying, and like I was saying about Look, Caleb if you Williams, are a quarterback even, and you, okay, and you if you're a quarterback and you're constantly moving around out the pocket trying to extend the play, or you're holding on to the ball too long, you're going to get sacked more. But what I'm saying is, with, that, with those sacks, you should and Caleb Williams having sex at the rate he had playing at USC is totally different from Shador Williams, from Shador Sanders having the sex he has playing at Colorado. Tell me because how. Because of the competition Tell me how. level. Tell me how. Competition level. The competition level. Because you, because because their USC schedule is five times harder. Colorado schedule was last year. USC in the beginning of the year was ranked. It was 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 they were saying they were going to be trying to get to the uh, playoff, right? That, I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't just you know hoopla rock rides like USC hey, was ranked, guy, right? Guy, Wait, time, whoa, 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 time. Yeah. USC was ranked, right? They played USC, right? Were they ranked? Yeah. USC yeah. was ranked. They played. They, so so Colorado yeah. played a ranked USC. Colorado played a yeah. ranked Oregon. Colorado played yeah. a ranked TCU. Colorado played yes. a ranked Arizona State. Colorado played a ranked uh who else did they play? They had they had a tougher, they had one of the tougher schedules in their conference. It's always a tough I, it's, it, it's, you, it's, it's always it's always a tough game between Colorado and Colorado State because it's a rivalry game. What I'm, saying, look, what I'm saying is they did not show well against any of those teams except TCU. Rest of those teams, they might have had fourteen. Like some, some of them games, they didn't have fourteen points. They think, weren't supposed. They, like they weren't. They weren't supposed to beat Oregon, USC, Arizona State. I didn't State. say beat. Let me finish. They I weren't. Didn't so, say beat. Let, let me finish. They weren't even supposed to compete with those guys. It, it was a shootout between them and USC. Oregon, Oregon jumped out ahead, and in, in in the second half, they crept back in and almost won a game. USC and Colorado was a shootout. Nah, USC and Colorado was 31 to 20 something. And the 20 that they got, I mean, 14 and they 20 came in the second half. Are you sure? They was down the whole game. Uh, of course, they were, they lost. They were down the whole game, but it, it wasn't like they got blown out by USC. Now, Oregon blew them out first half. And second half is the game you might be thinking about because the, the Oregon first half, it was ridiculous. And the second half is when yeah. Colorado put up numbers. So that might be the game that you're referring to. But USC Colorado was was a decent game. About Arizona, excuse me. By Arizona, Arizona State. I believe they beat they lost Arizona. Arizona too. Either that or they they barely lost. It was one of the two. No Arizona. Arizona. Oh, I don't. Arizona. I don't. I don't remember the Arizona. Arizona was Eleven last year. That I'm seeing they, they played at least four to five so. ranked. Colorado played at least four to five ranked teams, I believe. And I, I'm just saying, like, to well, me, that's what, you're to me, what I'm saying. Hold saying. Go ahead, man. Playing the ranked teams. And what you do against those right teams is how you judge. Like when USC played Oregon State or Oregon, it wasn't no thirty point blowout. It wasn't no oh we up by thirty man being being a being a uh, drop zone. They they you know what I'm saying like when USC played Oregon, I think, I think Oregon blew out USC. They boat rolled them niggas. But go ahead. You sure? Positive. But. What I'm saying is they have they 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 really have not they're not showing like star players do star things. 
So what does Colorado what, what, what does Col- what, what does what does Colorado need to do for you in your eyes to to show improvement or to show their work? I ask you that. Be better. How? Be better like any other team. How is be, what, what, like, what 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 does being better look like to you? If 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 you're saying if 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 okay, the the, the wheels have to match the car, bro. How if so? You're telling me that I have. How so? If you're telling me that I have this, but how so? This, I can tell you. But, but this, how so though? This pro, this pro. I'm telling you, this pro <laughs> coach. I know what you're doing, but I, I'm 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 gonna take it to the last sentence. Dion is not a pro coach, by the way. Okay. Go ahead though. We have an ex pro coach. What do you mean, the ex pro coach? You he, never bringing... coached. he never coached on a pro level. So just because you were an ex player, but he's a, he's a mean, pro. Just because you're an ex player doesn't mean that you're going to bring coaching on a pro level to a program. Just because you're an ex player, just because you were an ex player and so, you were a so, pro doesn't well, mean that you're going to that translate so he's into, not... into a great coach. So you have an unproven so coach. I'm asking you a question. So he's not proven now. He was unproven when before before he got there. I never said that he was a proven pro coach. So Jackson State, that. Jackson State went, means nothing. That that was nothing. Yeah, on that level, yeah, but he moved to to the next level. So you have a coach that moved from the SWAC or whatever that was to now he's in a power conference. So he's an unproven coach on that level. He proved himself on one level. Okay. And now and right. now he went to a next All level, right. and now he has to prove himself on this All level. Right. Okay. So on this level, is his coaching staff? Of a of a of a upper echelon, or is that a lower level of culture staff? I don't know. I mean, he has a former NFL uh, head coach as his offense coordinator, who was a decent head coach. But you got to see. That's what I'm saying. You got to see what this season looks like. If they if they pull out a but better record, told me because I keep telling you, and I'll say it again, they're two and one. So I think you need a bigger sample size. No, no to but see. you told me you. Go ahead. What I told you. I don't say you you told me that they brought in Warren Sapp and they brought in his pro better coaches and they and all this. So I'm asking you, to, is their coaching staff of an upper echelon? And you saying we gotta wait to see. Yeah, because Warren Sapp because Warren Sapp has never coached. So just because you bring it, you brought in Warren Sapp, who is who is good with the kids or the young adults who was a Hall of Fame defensive lineman, so he can teach technique, but we don't know how he's going to actually translate as a coach. You have a, a offensive coordinator who has been a head coach in the NFL. He didn't win nothing, but he was a decent head coach in the NFL, and now he's at he's your OC. You've brought in some other position coaches because you lost some position, some position coaches to other programs or the NFL. So now you have to see what this coaching staff – and program for this year can do. Hopefully, they will have a better outcome or record than last season because that's what you have to gauge it at. Your litmus test or your 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 starting point is last year's record. Now, do you out do do you outdo those goals that, that were set for last year for this year? So I was assuming if you go four and eight, I'm just throwing a number out there. If you're four and eight last season then your goal has to be to be better than four and eight. Mm-hmm. Maybe your goal this season is to reach a, a, a bowl game. So now you see how that looks. I don't think at two on one, you can judge them. I think you gotta, you gotta give a little bit more sample size before we can start saying if this, if this season was, was a success or not. And if Dion is running a successful program or not, I, I think after, well, a year, I think after a year and a couple of games, that's an unfair assessment. You got to have a bigger sample size this season. I didn't say that. I never said you I, said I didn't that. Say this, this is... I'm just speaking okay. on. I'm, 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 I'm just, speaking I'm just, on the situation yeah. because obviously, if you're asking how do I feel about it, and then I'm hearing some of the things yeah. that you're saying, then from from what I gather, just through context clues, you you don't feel like that a the team is good enough, and b that the coaching is good enough. That's just what I gather from from what I, I'm I, and that's cool because yeah, that's, that's your opinion. That. I love it. But I'm not making an assessment on the whole year. I'm just saying over the last, like I said, I'm you. I don't want to say that. I'm talking about these three games, and you're talking about the whole. I'm year. saying, I'm but, saying that I'm uh, saying, I'm saying that I, I don't, I don't. I'm saying out of these three games, they're two and one. So, I, I'm not. I got to see more before I before I actually give a yay or nay if this season should, is if, if they've improved or not. They're two and one. And 
USC was a, a ten point game last year. USC Oregon was a ten point game last year. That's fine. USC got blew up by one. Of was I, don't I mean, I'm just saying, I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. To be honest with you, I don't care about none of this shit, I mean, really, bro. I'm just. Bro, I mean, it's that's, two and one. that's your perception, bro. Well, yeah, nigga, I mean, you asked me, you not, asked me, so I'm not, telling you. You're not you, giving a fuck. You, doesn't mean. But, I told you like, you like ten up. minutes ago, bro, how I felt about the whole situation. Yeah. So yeah, like but we're just we're, we're going in circles. Take away point. from the situation. Okay, nah. nigga, I was wrong about that one game points. Okay, cool, I was wrong. Yeah, say right. I don't give a fuck about the situation. I don't give a fuck about it. I mean, I didn't say what you said, but um, I don't need to tell me what nah, I said. I know what I said. I, I said I don't give a fuck about it. How do you spend the day? Uh, it's not a spin, bro. But you, I, I get it. You're gonna say it yeah, doesn't matter. It, is what I, it, don't, it don't matter what I say. You're gonna have something to you say. You literally I'm said I'm for sure that this happened and that did. Happen. My nigga, and how many like, times have okay, you been cool. wrong about something? You've said you're for sure about something. You've been wrong. Cool. We be wrong sometimes, my nigga. I had the wrong game in mind. It's cool. I, I yeah, that's it's all cool, good, bro. I'm saying, I'm just saying, but I don't, I don't do play like that though. But, you don't do shit um, like what? Hey, bro. Hey, what you mean? What are, what are you talking about? You don't do stuff like I don't deflect. I said, I, I, don't, I don't deflect I said, like that. Okay, yeah. what, what did I deflect? Okay, so that's okay. It's all right. You okay? It's okay. You didn't deflect. I'm wrong. Whatever. It ain't an I'm wrong, all I'm right, right uh, thing, bro. It's a. Go ahead. What you got next? Uh, say something. Say, uh, dang, I lost my train of thought. Um, damn, it's all different guy. It was moving. It was moving away from that conversation, but it had a piece of it. I started. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think you go stay there for, for after after this year. No, I don't. So, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say nothing. I just want to know how you feel. I don't. I'm not gonna say nothing. About if, if he leave, leave or not? Then, huh? How do I feel if he leaves? Yeah, I ain't gonna feel no kind of way about it. I didn't feel no kind of way when he left Jackson State. To be honest with you. I don't think his question, his character comes into question at any point. At some Not point. at all. No, because I don't think his his character comes into question because if after year two, Colorado feels like he's not the coach for them, they can fire him, right? Mm -hmm. So when that happens, would we call oh. into into question Colorado's character? I'm just asking. Or will we say, you know what? It ain't work out. It's not a good fit. We're going to move on to somebody else. So if at the end of this season, if if you know he feels like uh, this isn't mm -hmm. the situation for me, this is the fit, the fit for me. I'm gonna step down and go do something else, mm -hmm. whether that's get back in the um the booth and commentate, or go coach somewhere, or go do whatever mm -hmm. Dion does. Like I don't think that calls yeah. into question his character at all. No, it just calls in the he it, oh, it wasn't no. a good fit. And so his words, what he says about what he wants to do, they don't. We can't hold him to any, we can't hold him accountable to anything. Like, cause if he, but in your scenario, if Colorado asked him to leave next year, it would be based on merit more than likely. It, it'd be more mer a meritocracy type thing where it's like, okay, well, you didn't achieve these goals that we were looking for. So we're going to look in a direction as opposed to, well, per your words, it takes time to build a program and it's two years in and I ain't, and I'm gone. Because a, a lot of a lot of uh, um, well, you not a lot, but a few a few um, sports analysts have said like Shador leaves, you know, he don't have a reason to stay there really. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be, and as he hasn't had the recruiting classes in the second year that he you know was expected to get, and as the the, the landscape is is changing, it's changing, like. It's gonna be. It's gonna make. It's gonna be less um, a harder pill to swallow. Record being seven and seven or eight and four because of the playoff is expanding. So there are gonna be teams that get into the playoffs at nine and three. You know, saying eight and four, and if he's not able to hit those marks, you know, looking at the schedule, it's gonna be tougher in eight and four this year as well. And then, then his son is leaving as well. It might. He might. You know. Move around, but if you, I mean, you said what you said. You did what it is. You know. I don't think that. Oh, I don't think that it has anything to do with his character. If it's not a, if he feels it's not a fit, and he decides to to leave, 
I mean, we he might stay. He said he he said that he he said he wasn't leaving. And he said he wanted to stay. He was investing in Colorado. That's where he wanted to be. Dion a millionaire and got options. So after his sons Center leave, Jackson and, State. Excuse me. Center State about Jackson State too. What do we say about Jackson State? I don't I don't recall. He said he said I'm not leaving. I'm here for the long haul. His exact uh, yeah. words. Well, and it, it didn't and haul. but it but it didn't work out. So so Tom so when when you have a job and you're with an organization and you can you can feel like I'm here for the long haul. I'm here for for the long haul of this organization. And as you are there, whatever it is that you're doing, whether if you're an accountant, a lawyer, a, a baker, a, a grocery sack or a truck driver, whatever, if, you know, the situation isn't working out well for you and your career goals and what you're trying to hit and what you're trying to do, and you decide that this isn't a good fit for me, I'm going to move on to a better, to a better opportunity. I don't think that that is a, a stain on your record when it comes to your character because at the same time that it same company that same company organization as soon as the numbers don't work for them they'll lay you off they'll fire you they'll demote you they'll whatever you know what i'm saying no no warning or nothing so how i look at it as a as a as a person or a human being you you have to handle yourself as a business as well and if i'm going down this road and this isn't the best situation for me to reach my goals or what I'm trying to achieve and what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm gonna move around. I don't think that's a I don't think that that calls yeah. your character into play at all. I mean, in the in the frame that you put it, yeah. But, but it's all it's all business though. It is. It's all business. It's not the same. It's, it's not, 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 not the same. It's all business, bro. Because Deion it's not Sanders, the same, Deion, sir. It's Deion, not the same. Deion, how is it not the same? It's business. Deion because Sanders coaching he, at Colorado. Deion didn't go to Jackson State, no, but he, he didn't go to Jackson State for business. How do you know That's that? not why he went there for he, How do you know because that? Because he said it with his mouth. With his mouth, he said, and it's understood. He said it with his mouth, and it's understood. Hey, we can't pay you like you worth. I know y'all can't. And he says, I know y'all can't pay me what I'm worth. Y'all can't afford me. I don't care about the money. I'm here to help this program grow. I'm coming here on a moral clause. I'm not coming here on a financial tip. So what you're saying is 100 percent right about being a business. Now that's rest. You're spot on. But when you come in, it's you can't equate everything to a business standard if there's a moral, if there's a moral factor involved. Just like with Colorado, just like this is the, the school has to look at. The morality and the legality and it's not just oh he's a good coach let's come hire him it's a bunch of coaches that could have got it's a bunch of coaches that don't get hired all the time bobby Hoskins, uh haskins uh bobby knight it's coaches that are great coaches but because of their moral compass they don't get hired oh what's up boy from the red raiders from texas tech no. the guy who keep uh june jones i believe but when we have to go, like it's a bunch of coaches that don't get hired strictly on, on their moral, on them, on the morality that they they made. The, the coach of Texas T last year got fired for a moral clause, not because they wouldn't win it. They didn't say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, that's different though. It, it, because if you violate something that's a moral clause, that's still business. You're being fired because what you're doing morally is not sound or someone feels like it's a bad representation on what we represent as a company. There are things that me being employed by a company that I'm employed by, if I get on here with certain things, representing certain things with, with company attire on, I can get fired for, it. but that's not a, a, in, that's not an indictment on someone who says this isn't a good fit for me. I'm gonna move on. When I said, yeah, I'm here for the long haul. I want to do this. I want to do X, Y, and Z. But when you get into it, if it's not working out for you to do X, Y, and Z, and you decide to part ways, and we're mutually parting ways, like it's that's, that's that's not an indictment on your on your on your character. Like it's all business. Don't get it twisted. I don't care how they much Deion Sanders get up mutually, there. They weren't mutual. I'm talking about. Whoa, whoa, talking about, talking about. It's all business. I don't care how much Deion Sanders get up here and say it's for the kids, it's for the young adults, and it is. He probably is. He probably does have these these young adults in in best interest at mind when he's on that field coaching representing Colorado, but it is all business. Deion Sanders is the coach of Colorado because before Colorado, before Deion Sanders, they weren't selling the shit out. 
after Deion Sanders, it's a sold out packed house. Millions of dollars is pouring into Colorado. That's why he's there. It's all business, bro. It ain't no morality. <laughs> it ain't no, I'm <laughs> here for the kids. It ain't no, we cool. And I'm no, bro. It's all a business situation for Dion, uh, Travis Hunter, uh, all these kids with NIL deals. Uh, it's too much money being made, bro. It is all business. It has, it ain't no, it ain't no, I'm doing this on the cool type shit, bro. I'm telling you that now. And, and that, and, and that's, that leads me back there. That's where I was going. And so this, there's a cynicism. Hold on. I'm gonna, I, 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 I got to say this. Hold on. I got to say this. I'm going to let you rock. If, it was, if that was the case, then uh, Harbaugh should be crucified for, for, for cheating allegations smearing the name of Michigan and then being rewarded with an NFL job. Go ahead. I mean, you, I mean, the difference between Harbaugh and Dion is, is that Harborough Harborough is getting, was getting crucified and it, it, they're, it, it's not like it's not mentioned about what he did. It's not like it's a swept under the rug, but the difference is Harborough, Harborough, when he was at Michigan, was directly speaking through corporate matters. But Jim he Harbaugh said every, everything that you say, everything that you're saying about Dion Forrest, he's saying I'm here for the kids. He vowed not to go to the NFL. I just want to coach college kids and get them to the NFL. He said all that. He did all that lip service while being the head coach at Michigan. And then once the, the shit hit the fan, he bounced and got an NFL job. He could have been went to the NFL so, if you want to keep it a bug, but he chose not to because everything yeah, yeah. he did all that lip service that we gonna say, just like Nick Saban, all this lip service we gonna say when we in these positions yeah. and we we we're doing this and we're making these millions of dollars, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna say it until yo, no, these, I mean, it's, until, it's, until it's, the it's until the numbers, stuff. until the numbers don't work no more, bro. And so honestly, so I'm saying, that, that, if, that's if, what I'm saying. But to my, part. And, and and honestly. If Dion decides to bounce after Shador, Shiloh, Travis Hunter, Jimmy Horn gone, if he decides to bounce after those four guys are gone, then yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't think it's an indictment on his character. I think that he came in, coached for two years, he he got a lot of money into some college kids' pockets. Uh he may have instilled some things into some college kids as far as that experience to be coached by Coach Prime and some of these Hall of Famers that are coming to help us coach. And you know what I'm saying? It ain't no indictment on his – it's not an indictment on his character. I don't well, think I'm the Jackson is, State thing was I'm an indictment is, on his character as well either. What I'm saying is Jim Harborough didn't come in and say, Jim Harborough, you can't – first up, no. Jim Harborough didn't go – to make me stay and be like, yeah, man, Miss Nick, make me stay. I know y'all, y'all, I understand the, 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 the social economic disadvantages that y'all have been at. I understand that this school has been, it has talent, but it's been, it's being suppressed due to monetary funds and I'm going to take a pay cut. But he didn't have to I, I because he can't, but he didn't have to. I didn't to. say what he had. No, he did no, let, let me finish, but he let me finish. He didn't let do me, that. Let, let me finish. He didn't have to yeah. because he took a different path. He came from the NFL as the head coach of the 49ers and rolled to Michigan. He didn't come. He didn't come. And, and, and now this part plays now, now this plays a part in it. He was he didn't come as as already a man of color. It's hard to get certain jobs. So he didn't come in and go to this school but they'll say as a starter school and coach. And yeah, he probably did tell him he's gonna do X, Y, and Z. And I think he made Jackson State some money while he was there. And it didn't fit anymore. So but, he but, but, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm saying is, hold on, hold on. So we, so, Damn, Dion, awesome. for, 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 for clarity, Dion couldn't get a coaching job anywhere else because he didn't have certain credentials that are needed to be a head coach. That's why he went to I didn't say anywhere State. else. So I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna say Deion Sanders could I'm not gonna say Deion Sanders couldn't get a job anywhere else. I'm not gonna say that. He's Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders could have got a job Deion somewhere. Else. No. His his issue was 
he didn't have I don't think I don't, he didn't have a degree, I believe it was. And Jackson State allowed him to 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 go to he, he went and got his degree at F A at F A I or F I U, I believe, while he coached at Jackson State. That was that was the thing. He didn't have the credential to coach. You have to have a, a degree, I believe, to coach at the at the at the um, college I, level. I don't I don't know. If he didn't have a degree. This, this is you can fact check me if you want to. Oh, I, that was, fine. That I was I'm, I'm not arguing. I don't know. I didn't know. That's news to me. Yeah. So so that was one of the issues of Deion coaching. Secondly, Jim Hart is different, like I said, because he verbalized. Uh, uh, he verbalized why I was coming here. Whether he's up to or not, that's that's up to him and God. But he said, "I'm coming here for this reason." I but every coach, is, every, but every they, coach is to every when every coach come in, they telling you they not, come. Why they, when every coach him, come in, whenever because it's not because I keep I keep bringing this up because it's not but something, not coach. bro. I keep bringing it up because it's not something that is unique yeah. to Deion Sanders. Every every coach that gets saying. hired. Every coach that gets hired for for a job, a head coaching job, is going to come in and they're going to tell you their goals, what they're here for, what they're trying to accomplish, and what they want to do. It's not anything unique to Dion. Mm -hmm. So why are we treating it as such? Why are okay, we treating it as such? Right? Why are we Have why you had are good we, coaches? Excuse me. Why are we treating it as such? And I've had good coaches and bad coaches. Because yeah, because we treat it as such because Dion made it a point. To, to unlike most coaches who come in and say they're gonna do the program like all like, like most coaches do, they come in and say I'm gonna do X Y Z, but Dion made it a point to not only say what I was gonna do, but basically I went to a situation that where I knew what I was saying would be felt a different way. He didn't play on the, the financial strings or on the the hoopla rah rah. He played on the emotional strings of a, of. A, Colored people, or people of color. He went to an HBCU, and his words were, "I want to restore HBCUs, not I want to help Jackson State. I want to restore HB." That's what he said. So now, when you, I'm not, I'm here for the long haul. I want to see this program be in, in contention with X, Y, Z. So, but moving on from Dion, you know, this is a whole different conversation. But did you ever no, did, but did you ever hear the full story about why he left? Because it wasn't just Dion. There were some things that Jackson State and the rest of the conference weren't doing on the up and up with Dion. Yeah. So it, I, it, I, it, I, it's I not one story, it's not but... one sided. And so again, it's it's it, and, and because it's not all one sided. I didn't say you said it was. I'm just saying it's not all one sided. Yeah, yeah. And so again, because it's not all one sided, and because all of this is still business. You can have great intentions. And, and that's, it's still business on both sides. And and so when you're looking at it from that angle, when, yeah, I came in with these great intentions, you know what I'm saying? I came in to coach this AAU team with great intentions. Y'all can't afford me because I'm an ex-NBA player, so don't even try to pay me the salary that y'all might pay other people. I don't know if AAU coaches get paid a salary. I'm just using this as an example. I, you can't, you can't, you can't even pay me. You can't even afford me. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna build up this whole program that we got in Houston because I got a passion for helping out underprivileged kids. And then I get in here in this year too, and not only are y'all not paying me, but I'm donating money. And now I see the president of of this, you know. And I'm not saying this happened. I just see I, I see funds being mishandled, uh, promises yeah. that were said were going to happen or happening. Yeah. Is not a good fit, so I'm going to move my talents to a different program where I can try to hit my goals. That's it. Yeah, man, that's sucker shit. Um, that's not sucker shit. That's business. What's called? What's what's called? How is it sucker? Explain to me how that sucker for, shit. For, for, for all intents and purposes, bro, Dion came in. And no, no, let's take it off of Dion that. because I'm, no, let's I'm take it off of Dion and let's speak on. What you just said, and what you just said was that sucker shit. What so I'm saying I would is, like to know yeah, I'm, I'm how about is that? I'm no, we're Dion. not. No, I'm, we're not talking about Dion at this. We're not talking about Dion. We're talking about the concept of what was said, and you said that yeah. sucker shit. No, I'm talking about like Dion. To, I'm talking about. No, we're not I'm talking. talking about Dion. It's not. Well, no, we have. We moved past Dion. Even you said you wanted to move past Dion, so we were just speaking. Yeah, on, but I'm saying what you just said. What, okay. And, and so what I just said. What I just said wasn't. What I just said wasn't a an example of Dion. 
It's just an example of a situation. Oh, okay. Of just business. And you okay, say, yeah, yeah that's sucker shit. So look, I want to know why is that sucker yeah, shit? Yeah, let me explain. I, that's to me, nobody sucker shit to me. Because if I go into a situation knowing that it's flawed, right? And then I turn around a day later, a year later, a month later, and be like, this shit is flawed. I knew it was flawed coming in. Like, at some point, like, I'm not disputing that there's a business aspect to, to, to many things, but saying that everything is business, bro, that is what, the, that's the issue. That's really, that's, that's what we, that's the society we live in, that's the capitalist society that we live in, and it, it turns everybody cynical by everything, bro. Everything is, oh, but that make dollars, it don't make sense, man. But that, that's not, that's not accurate, bro, because there's so many things that happen in, in, our, in this world, in our society, that are based on a dollar amount or on a business, on a business account. So if you're saying, or not you, but if a person is saying that, well, it's a bad business move, you know how many bad business moves turn into shit? Like, but it's not about dollars and cents all the time. Sometimes it's about the morality of the situation. What is the first? It's not about what, what it could do for me right now. What's going to happen in 20 years? What's going to happen in 30 years? I'm going to take this pay cut for 20 years straight because I know for 100 years this shit going to be here. So but that's so, not people think. Maybe people so, 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 so in my example, I said I took the pay cut because I wanted to build up this program, I'm bringing my resources with me as well. And some things that were, were promised that were supposed to happen didn't happen. And there was some mismanagement okay. on the league's part. And so as I looked, yeah. as, I, as, I, as I took a step back and looked at the entire situation and said, you know what? Might not yeah. be the fit for me yeah. uh, to be able to get accomplished what I would like to get accomplished. So we'll part ways amicably. I just don't see how that's that's, that's, that's not because, how because because that's, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's not that's not that's not that's not that's not that's not very that's not very um that's, that's not, not very, very um what's the word that's not um that's not realistic bro that is one thousand like, percent realistic let me ask you a question no it's let me not ask you, bro so we go, on, we go part on. amicably into some hold up can I ask a question can I ask a question can I ask a question have you ever been have you have you ever had to part ways with a with an organization or a company company. Um, against your will, but that, that's not the same. I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question. I'm. It's not about. I'm not a millionaire, so you can't. It's, it's not about. What I do it's to not, a it's not a, yeah, it it's is. It's not about millionaires, but we we moved on from the millionaire aspect, and and honestly, what we're speaking about, okay, is parties operating in their best interest, and and things aren't a good fit for that party or person. And they're deciding to part ways. That's all we're talking about. It doesn't. It, it don't matter if you're. It don't, it don't matter if you're juggling. About. It don't matter if you're juggling millions, hundreds, fifties, fives. You know what I'm saying? How can you say it's about business and then say it don't matter if you're juggling millions, thousands, or, or pop? It does what matter. I'm saying is, you know, millions, what I'm saying is no. When I'm saying when I'm saying, book, it's about business. The dollar amount. The millionaire who's juggling millionaire business. And they're in a situation and it's not a good fit yeah. for what they're trying to accomplish or what they're trying to do. And so they part ways. It's no different than the yeah. guy who's making $80,000 a year in that situation that they're in. They've noticed this is not the correct situation for me. I'm not able to hit my, my career goals that I'm trying to hit. It's not a good fit. So we're going to part ways amicably. It's, it's, it, it's, it's it's no different. The money you know why it's amount, different, it's attached. It's not. You know why it's different? It's 1000% not different, bro. <laughs> It's just one person's you know salary different? is set. One person's you know salary is seven though? figures. One person's salary is six. One person's salary is five. It's all about the you know fit. Why different, you know why it's different? different? Fill me up. You know why it's different? Doug? It's different because the person that's coming in, the person that comes in at eighty thousand dollars has a set of responsibilities, and they they have a they have a their padding. Is different from the person that that's coming as a millionaire. If I'm coming as a millionaire and I'm going to a situation where I know they can only pay me forty thousand dollars a year, and I'm a millionaire coming into that, I know it's forty thousand. I'm a millionaire, then I'm gonna be less upset, less concerned about certain monetary. I'm not worried about career benchmarks, and, and I'm, I'm stepping down my pay rate to take this job knowingly person per, I know this all, all up front so I'm not looking at this at, 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 I'm not looking at this thing as like oh man well, well shit 
you know what I'm saying? I can't hear my, my, my bench marks and my career marks in this thing. I'm going to leave it alone. I'll, I'll come in here knowing that I am the commodity that helps this situation. I have knowledge, skills, and, and, and connections that the situation doesn't have. I'm coming here. I'm coming as, as, as a damn near, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an investor. Be, being here is an investment for them, not for me. As opposed to, I'm coming in at eighty thousand dollars, and I and I I still have places I want to excel. I still want to hit different. I still want to still want to get to one twenty or or, or two hundred or three hundred. So it's a bad fit for me because they mismanaging money, and I don't have I don't have the capital or the or or the or the, the um I don't have the safety net to lose thirty thousand dollars a month for, for fifteen months. Whereas if I'm a millionaire, okay, shit, yeah, I, I handle it different. Oh, we lost thirty thousand dollars. Okay, boom. I don't like that, and I'm not going to keep doing that every year. Let me go call my other millionaire partner, or let me call my lawyer, and we'll get on that. We'll keep moving forward. I'm not going to abandon the situation because I ain't like how they doing business. But I knew they were doing bad business before I even got here. That's why I came here because they that's doing not bad business. Though. Like, but that's it's not, not realistic, the same. though. Because it, 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 it doesn't happen no, every day. Not, let me finish. It doesn't happen every day like that. It's not realistic because when you come in, first off, someone of that stature. They have different. They have different goals they're trying to hit. So clearly, the monetary the monetary gain part at that time is not that important to them because they're in a situation where the monetary gain ain't important. Now, they may have other goals and benchmarks that are more important to them than money. And if I'm coming into a situation that I say I want to improve, and I can come in here as somewhat of an investor. And I have a group that I can bring with me that yeah. is willing to invest as well. They're not going to invest yeah. if, if bad business is being done because they might not have the same goals that I have. They might strictly have monetary goals where if I invest X amount of dollars, I expect to receive a turn a return in X amount of time. So I'm not going to bring it. If, if I see my investment is being squandered or mishandled, I'm not finna in return I'm going to grab even more people that are part of my investment groups, resources that I have to have them now invest their funds and that shit gets squandered as well. And then ultimately the group that I have, the, the business that I've built now is compromised because of that. So if I come in first with different goals and I start off with the, with the, with the investments and I see, yo, y'all not even handling Y'all not even howling the, the 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 three M's I'm 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 throwing in. So if y'all can't handle the three million I'm getting, what are y'all gonna do with fifteen? What are y'all gonna do with twenty? Because these people are gonna be wanting to return on no that in eighteen months, in twenty four months, in thirty six months. So I would be a fool to continue squandering money in investments that are are being mishandled. If that's the case, you know what I'm saying? I'll take my resources and my goals that I was trying to accomplish here and take them to a more, to a place that is, that is, that is ready for the opportunity. And what you're saying right now, what you're saying right now is why, what you're saying right now is why places that don't have, uh, like what you're saying right now is, is the exact reason why rich stay richer and the poor stay poor because if you equate everything or if everything's equated to an investment or a return, then there's, I mean, I'm sorry, if everything's equated upon a return, then where are the investment dollars coming from? Like, how does a nonprofit work, bro? How does it, you think that when AT&T drops a band or 1,500 bands or 100,000 a year, you think they think we're going to get that back? Or they're thinking, oh man, so if I put this here, this is going to, this is going to fester and it's going to grow and it's going to spur something that even when this money, I like, we got tax breaks. We have, it's, it's 15 ways that companies. So what you just said is return. Like, it's not just so, about, but time, out, but time out, but what you just spoke about is return. So if I am a. It's so, not immediate though. Let me finish. What you just spoke about is return. Yeah. So as someone who made six figures with no kids, uh, I always owe the IRS. So if I didn't invest four or five thousand dollars into a nonprofit, I would just be paying the IRS. So yeah, 
I go find this situation. I, I, I donate these, these funds throughout the year and keep my receipts. You know what I'm saying? So now when I go do my taxes, I give them that. And now I don't get penalized having a, having a $5,000 tax bill. You know what I'm saying? So okay. when you have nonprofits and you have certain people doing X, Y, and Z, uh, donating, they're getting some sort of return. I'm not saying that I'm, when I say some sort, when I say return on investment, I'm not saying that someone is handing you this, this investment and they expect, they expect an immediate return. However, I'm saying yeah. when you do these deals and you have these investors, whether they're investing time, whether they're, they're liquid cash, other resources that they have, they want to see some sort of return on said investment. And if I am someone who is bringing uh, uh, investments of my own with a group as well of investors to try to hit a certain goal, if you're squandering the opportunity of what I'm bringing, why would I pour more into it? And that's all I'm saying. That's not, to me, that's not good. Okay, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that. Because the other piece I, is this, the other piece is this, and then I'm going to let you cook. It's like, you can you can throw a rock at how many organizations are out there to say they do X, Y, and Z. So if I have a goal for youth empowerment, okay? Let's say I got a goal for youth empowerment and I got a million dollars of my own money to invest. And I have a group yeah. of investors that can bring 20 M's more. And I go dabble with, with uh, uh, Yellow Brick Road Youth Empowerment. And I start with 30K. Yeah. And I see my 30K got squandered or I see my 30K got mismanaged. I can say, you know what? Yeah. They might not understand how to do certain businesses. So let me go get some resources that can educate them on how to do said businesses. And then I do that. And then we throw 30K more. Okay. And the same thing happens. Not because, okay. not because they're not understanding yeah. what to do. They're just squandering said opportunity, mishandling funds, whatever, whatever. I feel like after... Mm -hmm a certain point, I would be foolish to continue bringing resources to an organization or a situation that doesn't, that might not have the same vision I have. We're not moving in the same direction. We don't want the same things. So then I say, cool, I will make a amicable split split. And then I'll go elsewhere. I feel like I would be foolish to just continue pouring and pouring and pouring resources into a situation that isn't producing the fruit that I need that tree to bear. That's all I'm saying. And I don't think and, anyone and is think right or wrong in the situation. Tra transitioning to the next topic, because that's really what I was going to anyway. Um, I think that is the Republican versus Democrat way of thinking. Because, and this is not exact, this is just, you know, on just certain levels. And, a roundabout way. Democrats are about social programs. Social programs, you don't see any type of ROI, maybe for sometimes for two or three generations later. You don't see nothing. And to a person who would think, or a person who was looking at it as, I put this much in and it got squandered away or it got, you know, mismanaged, well, that's what's going to happen, you know what I'm saying, with certain situations because of the way that the system is set up, of the way that it's set up. If I if I go try to if on the on the smallest scale, if I got a crackhead cousin and I want to save my crackhead cousin, I have to know that it's gonna be some it's gonna be some pitfalls. There's gonna be times where they might break in my house. I might give them a hundred dollars and they might go hit high with it. Part of part of recovery is is relapse. That's not just with drugs. That's with anything. You can't recover from you, more than likely. You're gonna fall back into the into the into the pocket, you know, at some point or in, in ways. And democratic policies try to try to make policies that are long lasting, that are thirty year, twenty year policies, and Republican policies are like now. Nah, we gonna throw this much money at it, and they gotta figure it out. And this is a different philosophy. One we've seen doesn't work a hundred times. One you don't get to see if it works because at a certain point 
enough people get fed up and be like, oh man, they ain't working, man. They still got drug dopings out here, blah, blah, blah. Can you give me an example of, of a democratic um, policy that is that, that you're speaking of? Can you give me an example of a, of a, of a current democratic policy? and the current Republican policy that they want to implement and how that's affecting uh, us as citizens in America about, you know, what you just spoke about. Can you give us uh, an example of that? Can you give us an example of... Obamacare. Excuse me? Obamacare. Who? Oh, I couldn't hear you. You broke up. Obamacare. Okay, cool. Explain, Ob explain Obama it to us. Obamacare. Explain it to us. Obamacare. Obamacare basically was trying to move America towards free or at least reduced... Um, insurance for everybody, right? Under the premise that insurance should be free. So it gave you country, it gave you an right? affordable option if you couldn't get insurance through an employer or something like that, or if it was too expensive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That was what they, that that was what it did, but it was the first step in trying to get free insurance for everybody, okay. right? Republicans are like, nah, man, shit, I work hard for my money, so I should be able to, it's not fair for them to be able to get the same insurance as me. And they don't work as hard as I do. So instead of, so it's a, it's a fight. And also the insurance companies are like, nah, man, we got a whole industry over here based on getting money from the top and being, you know what I'm saying? So eventually what ends up happening is of course, we got the, the president comes in. And he's like, "Man, we're gonna we're gonna try to repeal all these Obamacare laws." And so, what was it? What what what, what 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 did the Republicans replace that with? From my understanding, we still have Obamacare, which is the yeah, it's not it's not called Obamacare anymore. It's called something else, but it's still the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that changed well, was is when Obamacare first came out. Uh, if you didn't have, in, if you didn't declare any type of insurance coverage, you had to pay a tax penalty. So if you didn't carry employer paid benefit or employer buy-in insurance, and you didn't sign up for the free uh, Obamacare health plans, then come tax time, you had to pay uh, a tax or a penalty for not having any type of health care coverage. And I do think some people had an yeah. issue with why are you taxing me because I am not covered by any insurance. I do think that that was one well, of the because, first things well, that I heard. But yeah, but also you have to, think, you have to also think that on one side of it, some of the provisions that are put in Obamacare were not well because of Republicans. They they put provisions in. Okay, what is that number? And also, in in the long run what taxes are for are to pay for everybody, right? So if you're not covered and you don't have insurance and then something happens to you, who puts that bill? I mean, we still had, like, I know back in the day, people went, if you could, if you didn't have insurance, and I think they still do, you would go get the gold card, right? So you would have to go to one of those uh, state-funded hospitals that, uh, that, that would be able that? to give you, well, taxpayers pay it, but this was before Obamacare. Yeah, so that, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying the same thing. So if you're saying that I'm not going to get no insurance, I'm not going to take this produced insurance, but then let's say, God forbid, something happens to you, it's going to come right back and, 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 and want to get, because we're not taxing you. You're, you're going to come back and get the same insurance, I mean, the same care that you should have been on. So it's like, well, you know, but you're not but now what time out though. You're not getting the same care when you sign up for those. Have you been to one of these uh state hospitals or one of one of these uh like like free care hospitals? I don't know if I'm saying the right term. You're not getting the same care. It's definitely that's the issue. care. But the other That's the is, issue. And no, I I'm not I don't have issues. That's the issue. I don't have an issue no, I'm with, saying that. with Obamacare. I'm just asking like Example wise, yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about also, the issue, period. I, I also like, would ask would, what did the Republicans do when they came in? Did they change did they change it? Or is it essentially the same? The the what do they call it? Because they don't call it Obamacare anymore, but it's the same it's the same thing. Yeah, affordable air care. Yeah, affordable health care. Yeah, I mean, like they, they didn't change it, it's still that's there. What, that's what it was from the beginning. Yeah, it's still to be there. clarified, it was never 
it was never Obama. Oh, the reason why I got called Obamacare is because the public has named it that to try to demonize it during the election. It was always the Affordable uh, Health Act. Uh, uh, I was just wrong with how you describe it. So. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's just so, you know, whatever. But all that, it's not the, it's not the same. It's, there's been because a, a good example is um, before the Affordable Health Act, before, before President Obama, if you had a pre-existing something, insurance could be like, oh man, no, you you already got this. You can't we can't insure you. Oh, we gotta charge you more because you had, you know, you got in a car accident three years ago, or, or you, you got diabetes or you got, you know, whatever. They're they're slowly repealing those types of prerequisites. If you if you if you remember like maybe like yeah, probably like about eight years ago, all these companies were like no, they were like, no, nah, it don't matter if you have any pre-existing conditions. We'll take you anyway. But before it was like you had a pre-existing condition, like yeah, we're gonna charge you extra for that. We're gonna we're gonna tax you if you you know what I'm saying. Like what companies it's, it's mean? incremental, huh? What company you mean? Give me an example. Insurance co- insurance companies. Like you talking, about, health, you talking uh, about you talking about like life insurance or you talking about just regular healthcare? Life insurance, health care. Well, yeah, no, well, life, health life, insurance. life insurance, life insurance, yeah, and it's always been that way. If you are a smoker or you have pre-existing uh, conditions, your your premium is going to be more than someone who passes their physical as a healthy person. Like, I was 21. Well, they were appealing. I was 21 and, and was a tobacco user and, you know, dealt with that. And as I was a diabetic six years ago, I still had the same situation when I got uh, outside my company benefits life insurance. Yeah, I got to take a physical. Uh-huh. And because I'm a diabetic, some places wouldn't cover me. Uh, my my premium would be higher because I am a diabetic. Um, I but just they're, they're, the, they're, that's, they're, the, they're, they're, that's how it is. What I'm saying, they're, they're, they're moving away from that because that's some, that's some of the provisions of the Affordable Health Care Act. And like I said, the ultimate goal the ultimate goal was to have free health care. That's the ultimate goal. And the, the pushback is is because you have industries that like, if we have free health care, then how do we get paid? Right? Like the the, the pill reduction, the the, the, um, the pill price reduction and certain things, like it's, it's incremental, you know what I'm saying? But once again, speaking of business versus morality, yeah, a business model says, it's our product, we charge we want to. But the morality says, man, why are you charging twenty dollars for a time now, pill man? Why are you charging twenty dollars for this? You have this, you made this breakthrough that can that can eliminate or that can that, that can that can heal hundred million people, but you only want a million people that can afford to be able to have it. You're charging it so that or you know for sure that that person that makes forty thousand dollars a year can't afford that health care, can't afford that that drug. Because you made it, you made it so thousand dollars. Where I've where I've seen, where I've seen, where I've seen the biggest issue with healthcare, if you're just asking me, someone who's always had a job, who's always had benefits and had healthcare, is, um, I think it's, it's, it's when you retire, when you hit retirement age, when you, when you're, in, when you're 65, 66 and up, your retirement age, and now, you, you, you're on, you don't have that company provided healthcare that you've paid forty years into being an employee and now you have Medicare and Medicaid, which I guess is supposed to be some sort of free healthcare. I don't know how that works, but yeah. you're paying, you're paying premiums on, on medication now. And I don't understand how come just like I have dependent care. So if I have kids, I can, I can carry my kids up until they're 24. I don't know how come we don't have senior care where, after they hit a certain age, I can't carry my parents on my insurance because I know my parents are in their seventies and they have this Medicare and Medicaid, but um, yeah, they still come out of pocket $125 for certain prescriptions, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because they don't have a, they don't, they don't have a, um, what do you call it? They don't have a deductible to hit. Like I, like I have a deductible to hit. Then I, I normally hit my deductible by February. So, you know, my medication is zero dollars or ten dollars or five dollars, you know. But again, I have commercial insurance. I have Aetna or Blue Cross Blue Shield or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, as as but a retired as a retired yeah, read. This, I'm listening. Sorry to cut you off, but think about this. There are is it two hundred and thirty million people? Something like that, two hundred and thirty, two hundred and fifty million people in the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Those of those people, there are less people who are fully insured than there are, you know, there's less people who have have, who have the ability to pay. Right? Like literally, there was a time in the in the eighties, seventies, sixties, fifties, even some of the nineties, where even some of the two thousands, where I mean, John Q was about Medicaid and Medicare, right? Like I can't afford this surgery. Yeah, no, one thousand percent. I really do believe that that healthcare is the issue. Look, if I didn't have commercial insurance when I had my my health issue two months ago, I wouldn't have been able to afford to do what I had to do. I got the fucking bill in the mail. It was a hundred grand, homie. You know what I'm saying? It, like my my bill yeah, was a yeah. hundred grand, and I'm looking at that shit yeah. like what? And if I didn't have in in, in out of pocket, I may have came what four hundred, five hundred. You know what I'm saying? And if I didn't have commercial insurance, yeah. That would have been an issue. Now I could have still got the procedures done. I would have I would have had to go to one of these these state hospitals and it still could have happened. Still could have got it done. But I wouldn't have gotten yeah. the same care. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have got the same care. I, I I see people who are in these these quote unquote free health care hospitals or clinics or reduced price, whatever it is, bro. I see that shit. I see the room they in, and then I see the room that I was in with my commercial insurance. I see the room that even though my, my mom and dad have Medicare and Medicaid, I see where they're going. They're going to Methodist. They're going to yeah. the center. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah. help. I agree with you that, that help. Yes. There needs to be healthcare reform. This shit shouldn't be as high as it is. Like some of this shit is crazy, bro. I'm a diabetic and some of the medication I take, if I didn't have insurance, bro, that shit is like $400. But I also know it's some bullshit because you can go to CVS and you can be prescribed the medication. Your insurance might not fully cover it. I had this situation uh, two weeks ago. I, I go to the, to the pharmacy. My doctor puts me on a new medication. It's working great for me, but it's not a three-month supply. It's, it's, it's $200, and that's with my insurance. And the pharmacist is saying, you know what? Let me see if I got a manufacturer's coupon to put on top of that. And she goes to yeah, find yeah. one, and I pay $25. That alone lets me know and the, the the healthcare system to me is a bunch of bullshit, smoke and mirrors, inflation. This person getting paid for that, this person getting paid for this. If my if my if my medication is supposed to be nine hundred dollars and through insurance and manufacturers coupons, I pay twenty five dollars. Yeah. That yeah. shit can one thousand percent be way cheaper for all Americans across Everybody. the world. Everybody. Because yeah. The, the amount of people who are on this shit, I'm pretty sure it's higher yeah. because they yeah. keep us on this medication because the food that they're feeding us is bullshit. Every and and and, and then when you look at that, it's it costs more yeah, money to but, eat healthier I'm, than it costs more money to eat healthier than it does to buy the bullshit. I don't have kids, and every time I go to the grocery store, I'm spending one ten, one twenty. So I can imagine yeah. the household of of five or four. Paying yeah. a mortgage, paying a car note, uh, making a hundred thousand that ain't shit no more. A hundred thousand ain't shit no more, bro. And you got two yeah. kids. Well, it it ain't, ain't bro. A hundred thousand ain't shit no more, bro. It, it, it ain't shit it, no more, bro. It's not. It One is, thought, it's not, bro. And that's crazy it's, it's, that I'm saying a hundred K ain't shit, bro. A hundred if you if you have a it, four, it, it, if you have a four family household with a mortgage. Yeah. When you look at your average price, your, the average price you're paying for a mortgage or rent, that shit is damn near two bands. The average American is yeah. paying seven hundred dollars a month per car note. You know what I'm saying? The average American's uh, uh, wages, huh? Let's see, what I'm saying, the average American's my, wages hold. hasn't went up. Go ahead, go ahead. But go ahead. everything else is inflated. The price that you're paying at the grocery store today, from four yeah. years ago, is fucking inflated. I'm not finna sit here and say I can't afford eggs and bacon. No, I'm not gonna say that. To me, yeah. bacon has always been high. Right brand bacon has always been eight dollars, ten dollars, but it's twelve dollars. Yeah. Shit's fucking crazy, yeah. bro. I remember a hundred, bro. What's I remember a hundred dollars at the grocery store. Yeah, nigga, you yeah. had two baskets, bro. When we was when we was in Let's high see. school, when we was in high school, 
a hundred and ten dollars at the grocery store, my nigga. You had two baskets. Yeah. Nigga, I Which go a hundred dollars. I got the little midget basket. We eat different. We, we, we eat different. We uh. What do you mean we eat different? We growing I'm not buying ramen noodles in my fucking. No, 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 no. No, I'm not buying ramen noodles. If you go buy some meat, bro, it's over with, bro. And I ain't oh, talking I'm about saying, a bunch of T-bones either. I'm talking about some just some regular chicken breasts, ground turkey, yeah. ground chicken, some carrots, some bell peppers, some salads, some Coke Zero, some fucking kettle chips. That's a hundred dollars, bro. And I ain't even bought no laundry detergent and toiletries yet. Yeah, but and and on and I'm I I agree with you so I'm not I'm not I'm not debating you on that part. You're right, you're hundred percent right. But also don't grow like not to put you on the spot. But you're a perfect example, bro. You can have a whole garden in your back. You can you won't have to buy bell peppers. You ain't gotta buy oranges. You ain't gotta buy certain things. You ain't gotta buy me too. Shit. I ain't I ain't gotta buy jalapenos, bro. The rest of my life. I shouldn't have to. It's a bunch of stuff that we could um uh, shout out to Ebony, man, wherever she at. Ebony, um, with a buddy matters, man. I, I remember uh, I did some work with her. A couple years ago, man, she had the couch and kitchen kids, or whatever. And in her backyard, man, she had she had three, she had three gardens. She had no huge backyard, regular backyard, but she had three gardens. She used to often like, man, you can grow this shit, man. You ain't you, it, it's not it's inexpensive, and it's cost efficient to grow, at the very least. You know, what I'm saying your tomatoes, your, your jalapenos, your celery. You know, your pickles if you want to, or cucumbers. You know, you can grow that stuff in your backyard. It is. It doesn't take much. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get fancy, and because she had like three regular, she had four. She had like three regular. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just vegetables, whatever. She had one that was like you know exotic fruits or whatever. But we don't. Some of the some of the costs that we have are convenience costs that we that we we've turned into. Uh, Necessities, you know what I'm saying? Which they are to an extent. I can't I can't say they're not, but some of the things we do like it's just the it's just, our lifestyles are so dependent upon uh convenience to an extent to the point is where like we've lost the we've lost the vision of anything else but processed action. They got a garden in the back? Mm -hmm. They got a garden in the back. Do I have a garden in the back? Yeah. Nah, I really don't have the green thumb, bro. And uh, the vegetables ain't what's hitting my pockets. I need I need a cow and uh, some chickens yeah. in the backyard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, I said I was going to do that. Actually, I said I was going to go in with... Uh, I said I was going to go in with a family member and slaughter a cow and just... You know what I'm saying? We go half. I think it's we go half half on it. My grandfather used to have a um uh you know, we have a family ranch in in Texas. And when my yeah. grandfather was alive, we had cattle on it. So, you know, we would we would be able to go. They slaughter the, the, the calf or the bull or whatever it is, you know, every so often and we go down there and we, we get all the cuts of meat from it. Uh we was able to get like butter cheese eggs and shit like that it was pretty cool bro about what huh what about the cow i'm just saying oh yeah the farm yeah the whole farm so yeah, yeah, yeah it was a whole farm so we okay, got okay. on there and, okay, uh, okay you know you know my parents of course they got vegetables and shit but it was a whole farm bro they had pigs cows yeah. chickens uh yeah. veggies so they would go down and get out and do all that shit you know what i'm saying and, and like i said it, it uh my grandfather on my mother's side would always call it like cow butter and i was like ain't all butter from cows but it was like, uh, yeah. you know, it 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 wasn't the process, but that you would find in the store. It's it's however the process is of them churning the shit and whatever. And it had a different taste too, bro. Same thing with the eggs and, and back then, bro. They ain't put the eggs in the refrigerator. Like they brought them shit to the house and left them on the table. You know what I'm saying? So it was pretty cool. Yeah, actually, if if I had the if I had the bread, I would have like a ranch farm type situation, live off the grid. But uh, I don't have a green thumb, bro. Man. And well, the veggies ain't the veggies ain't the veggies ain't my problem. Like again, it's the cow, the cow and the pig and the chickens. That's what I need. You ain't supposed to be eating that no way, bro. Huh? You ain't supposed to be eating that. You ain't supposed to be eating that no way. You eat chicken every day. You ain't supposed, 
Yeah, wait, I, we, I'm sorry. We, I, 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 I said you, I mean, yes, we ain't supposed to be eating that no way, man. Nah, bro, I'm, 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 I'm six, I'm, I'm six foot two sixty now, but I still, <laughs> I still that. need, uh, I still need some steaks in my life, bro. What size, what size waist you wear, Paul? Yeah, steak. Uh, now, today, today, shit, I'm probably uh thirty. What if I told you I wear thirty? Maybe thirty-two. Yeah, I wear thirty eight now, bro. I mean, you know what? I'm probably, I'm probably 34. I'm tripping. I'm probably 34. I don't know. I'm probably 30. Last time I got measured, I was 34. So 38. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably right. Well, when was the last time you so went to the store and bought some Levi's or something, bro? Some jeans. You know what I'm talking about? Man, it's been a long time, bro. It's been a long time. I'm probably, I'm probably, a, probably a 34 or 33. Damn. So you say, so you say you lost some weight. Oh, yeah, like I, 30, 30. That's, that's, that's not like, bad. That's not, that's you want to know the truth, bro? I'm like 38. I'm pushing extra large shirts, man. If I throw the extra large shirt on, bro, like a what? If I throw the extra large shirt on, bro, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna look like yeah. one of them chubby niggas trying to wear too small clothes. So I gotta rock the two X, but the three X too big. You know, I used to rock three X because I wanted some space. I used to wear the 42. Yeah, yeah. 42 is fall off you boy. I'm at 38 trying to push. <laughs> it's a perfect, it's a perfect fit. It's a perfect, it's a perfect sag on the, on the, on the forties. Cause nah, I, I too see, big though, bro. The forties too it's big. Kinda... Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. This... I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I, I, I got, I got, I got a slimmer cut Levi's bro. I just want to see if I can fit them hoes and them hoes fit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, right, bro. You want to say it? This sound wants skinny jeans, bro. You got a, you got a lot of people, man. I don't this like baggy. I don't skinnies. like. I don't like baggy pants like that. But I don't rock the skinny jeans though. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna say, uh, honestly though, like, uh, shit, my sweats, most of the time, like sweats that I'm gonna be active in, not no workout sweats. You know what I'm saying? With sweats I'm gonna be out and be active in, I'll be getting forty, bro. You know what I'm saying? Comfortable is for like comfortable with space is 40. But really my size is I like a 34. Oh, that's it. I don't that's about 40. Yeah. I got I mean I gotta tighten them in the waist a little bit, but like I do 40, 40, 40, 36 is me. Like 40 waist, 36 length. That's right. Well, yeah, that's right. What sweatpants you wearing is like giving you that you don't get like large, extra large? Like when you go buy a Nike tech suit, you get I mean, yeah, yeah. Would you so buy a Nike text? No oh, oh man, I'm I, sorry. I, I, I forgot who I was talking to, bro. Like I, I wear clothes, bro. I forgot who I was talking to. Never mind, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, mean, I go shopping. I, I, have, I go I, shop like once a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is the reason why I know it's forty because when you have to do the size chart, the X, you know, the, it'll tell you XL is this, or XXL is that, and you know. So I you do, buying two X sweats? So I buying two X sweats? Or three X? Bro, that's crazy. Are you fucking serious? Bro, but I you say it's, not, it's not fair. That's what I'm saying. Because I, I, can, I can wear, I can comfortably wear a medium shirt, a large shirt, XL, and a 2X. It's like, you really can't tell the difference. It's because I'm long. Pause, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I, I got to, yeah, I'm long. So, like, yeah, it's, it's hard buying clothes, bro. They don't make clothes for people. Size, really. Uh, what I'm gonna say that's why. I remember, remember, remember in the 2000s when, when they had the you know the button up era. And in the, the 2000s, you know saying, our clothes was too big for us, bro. I looked at some of them pictures, and all my clothes that I had on in the 2000s was way too big for me to be having on. Yeah, but if you ever watched the the the, the NFL or NBA, you know drafts or any of that, like. They should look all the way awkward, man. Because like it was. you can't the me the measurements for somebody who got long arms, long legs, and small waist. That shit, that shit's hard. You know what I'm saying? Because both well, people ain't gonna have to take the time to go to a tailor at the draft. The rack, but see, at the draft back then, they didn't have the money on draft night. Now, a year later, yeah, yeah, the year later they had. A, well, if you won no. one, two, and three, like if you got drafted you got in eight, the second round. Money. Bro, it ain't money. like it ain't age, like these money. niggas, bro. huh? You got an agent, you got money. Mm. Agent for the agent for the drop, some agent for the drop, ten to fifty on you just to be your agent. Like shit, this your they gonna they gonna front you some money 
Because so, they know when you finna get a contract, here's what you call it, man. And, 10 to 50, what? 1,000? Yeah. Bro, the suit costs 10. No, you finna make a. That's what I'm saying. You finna, if you, I, you if finna, I knew, you, if I knew, if, 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 if I was finna, if I'm an athlete, my suits are gonna cost me like 20 bands, maybe 30 bands. Hey, dude, you, you a different type of nigga, man. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You I, a different spend type of nigga, bands, I spend five bands on a suit right now. So, you know what I'm talking about? And I ain't got it like that. I spend five bands on a suit what? right now. My shoes is finna be, if, if, if I got money, my shoes finna be six. I'm finna go get some Giuseppe's to put on with my Davidson free suit. Now, if you know how much Davidson free suits cost, this man don't make nothing on the rack. You say, hey, Davidson free. He say, hey, how you doing, yeah. sir? And then you say, hey, man, I like that out of uh, three-piece situation I seen Jay-Z wearing. I want something similar to it. And then you go to him, and then he get your measurements, and then he make your shit, bro. And you're spending like 30 bands. So, yeah, that's me. Tom Ford, that's me. Man, what's it, what's your most expensive pair of shoes you have? You know what? Before you answer, I got though, some. Oh, okay, go ahead. I mean, you think about it. Go ahead. I, I know what it is. thinking about it. Oh, I'm going to say my joy is finding a pair of shoes that might cost a bunch, but I can get it. Like, I still had that same fast food line there. Like, I love going to fast food and look at the menu and seeing how I can mangle to get my burger or my whatever they got going on and without upgrading it, finagle it and get some shit at a low price. So like, okay, let me get a regular cheeseburger, but could you put that on sourdough bread with a uh, honey cheese and let me get some fries and could you give me a side of chili on it? Like I want to finagle the menu to pay $8, but really get a twenty dollar bill, you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about like the jersey right here, man. This jersey cost me twelve dollars, bro. Nah, bro. Uh, I I got some Jordans I paid six hundred for because I wanted them, then I couldn't find my size in the store, so I said, "Fuck it." I paid the six hundred off. off 600. I paid the six hundred because I wanted them, and I only wear them. I paid the six hundred because I wanted them. I wore them twice, and they just been sitting up for four years, uh, or three years. Size um, hundred. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you got if you got four fifty, you can have them. Nah, I, I paid four fifty for shoes. My guy shoot my damn self. I got a pair of gills, man. Like, you know what? I'm not vain. I'm not self indulgent, but I know I just I realized that certain different things make the people push it. That boy, I was walking yesterday. This is two stories in one. I was walking. I was, I was taking a trash out. And I didn't want to go outside with my shirt outside. I just threw a jersey on, boom. So I'm wearing a heel. You know what I'm saying? So I went through, through trash out. I come back upstairs. Come upstairs. I'm like, hey, man, that grand heel was holding. You know what I'm saying? I was like, appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, I don't know. It's like, man, somebody else appreciated my love for, you know, the nostalgia. So uh, it was a Thursday. Yesterday I played. Thursday I played. On the court, it's a dude that be filming the games or whatever. I nigga yelled out, We got the gills, the them, them gill zeros on, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? They kind of, I got some inconspicuous gill, gill, they, they, they're they they not loud enough, you know what I'm saying? But if you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's all that shit out. I'm like, oh, nigga, no. I got the restaurants or whatever. Got the gill restaurants, blah, 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 blah. like, man, you know what I'm saying? I started to say that. We all like we all have our pockets of shit that like, you know, we fuck with, you know what I'm saying? And, like if you in your car and you banging uh 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 Conway at the light and they were calling you like that's that Conway, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, oh that whole hard, you know what I'm saying? The feeling that you get from that, you know what I'm saying, it's like I'm not alone in this world. In the way I feel about this thing, it's like I don't know what, what am I trying to describe? I don't know because if a nigga screaming at me, I'm gonna let my window up, or it's not gonna be down in the get go. And because I don't want to talk to you niggas. If you if you if you pull up to if you go if you at the if you at the uh, at the uh, Jack in the Box or the whatever fast food you might go to one day, and you happen to be playing Conway, and a nigga take your license, that's a new Conway, and he and he you know what I'm saying. 
What she gonna say back? Yeah. Did, 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 uh, first off, it ain't gonna be that loud while you taking my order. Second, I'm you know I'm I'm thinking my right, at the window. Yeah, it's it. I, I turned the music down, bro, because I want to make sure my order right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want really not, 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 not to not the, not the order part at the window part. You know, when I go order, pick so my not, food up, right? Jamming. No, I'm not jamming. Yeah, you know, already no, jamming. the volume is still down because when I when you hand me my bag, I'm a a ask for yeah. some extra condiments and b. I don't want yeah. you my business. Like, don't ask me no question. Hand me my food and and give me my card back, and give me my drink. I'm gonna say thank you, you know, sir, ma'am. I'm gonna be nice. Don't ask me no extra questions. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Hey, Dub, you not like the service industry. He don't want to like. He don't like you niggas. He don't want you niggas to be his friends. Well, I, I didn't say that about the service industry. I just said that about in general, like just random niggas. I don't want to talk to these. People, man, I'm not a friendly guy, bro. I'm not a social butterfly. Not about being friendly, man. Anybody I'm not friendly. I'm not a social butterfly. Being, nigga. No, I'm. Yeah, I treat humans. people nice. If I'm walking by, I, I open the door for people. It doesn't have to just be a female. Or so, okay, 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 okay. If someone so falls in front of me. You, you open door. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. You walk. You walk in. You walk. You walk in into the uh, 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 grocery store. You got a pair of Jordans on. And the cashier be like, oh shit, that's the rush collars, man. The ball is hard. What you gonna say? Appreciate you, man. Thank you. And how do you feel about somebody complimenting your shoes? I don't feel no kind of way about it, to be honest with you. Because I don't, this is gonna sound crazy, bro. I didn't I didn't buy them for compliments. I bought them because I like them. So yeah, I, I don't that, feel no I don't feel I'm no not, kind of shit. way about it at all. Like, I don't feel no kind of way if you like it or you don't like it. I don't feel no kind of way about it. So you don't have feelings, you don't have any feelings at all. Oh, you don't have no feelings at all. Like I'm I not think, saying I think I think I think I think I, like, think I nigga, would get a nigga say something. I think that you compliment nigga. Like what you mean? That's weird. Nigga. You tell oh, me if I get a compliment. No, no, like I said, if I get a and compliment. If a nigga be like, oh man, that hat cut fly, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't feel no kind yeah. of I don't feel no kind of way about it though. You know what I'm saying? Outside of nigga say I got a nice haircut, cool, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel no kind of way about it. Now now, if I made some sort of art or something for interpretation, so if I made a song or if I painted a painting or if I have a screenplay or if I did a, a short series and I put it out there, I would value someone's opinion. You know, whether they said they rock with it, they said, man, hey, yo, bro, I, I saw that short film that you got on Tubi. That shit was really fire. I'd be like, I appreciate you. And I would feel some sort of gratification about it because I made it for people's enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? But if I walk through, you know, uh, uh, Starbucks and someone's like, hey, man, that's, that's a nice uh, 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 MacBook Pro you got there. I'm going to be like, oh, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, and I got it from the Apple store, you know, doing such and such sale. And that's it. I don't feel no yeah, kind yeah. of way about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel no kind of way about it. If you ask me a question about it uh, and I can help inform you or help you on your way to get it or something like that, I'll tell you that. But, yeah, I don't. I don't feel no kind of way. I'm a, I'm a call, I'm a call a little cap on you, bro. I'll tell you why I'm a call cap on you, man. Now, if a bitch tell me that my hat could fly and I look nice, that's the best thing, though. Because, you know what I'm saying? No, no, niggas, no, no, no. Well, I'm just saying, a lot of shit for hoes. You, but if it's just you, you, random you, type shit, I don't feel no kind of way about it. You do too much fly shit. Because I'm a fly so nigga. I, but I love myself. That's what I'm saying. I, I I'm saying how you... So if anything else, I do the shit for me, my nigga. So I ain't never met a mirror that I don't like. So no, I'm saying I ain't never met a mirror I don't like. So yeah. I walk by the mirror and yeah. fall in love every time. With that being said, bro, I'm a fly nigga because I'm just a fly nigga and I'm vain as fuck. I know I'm all that in the bag of snacks anyway, so I really don't need you to tell me that. And it sounds like some vain shit I'm saying right now, bro. It really do. It sounds some horrible vain. I mean, shit. it does sound that. But you know like, I'm, I'm not really gonna care I wanna... if somebody. You know, I don't really care if a nigga like the shit I got or the things I do. Unless I'm doing it for I, I, the interpretation for people, you know, like you know, I music. Agree, I agree with you. I, I'm not saying I have the right to agree or disagree with what you're saying, but I understand what you mean, and I I, I, I get that I get that perspective. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I just feel like you know, there's there's a part of me that enjoys um, validation. Of, you know what I'm saying? I think the artist in me is bigger. The artist in me enjoys somebody else seeing the art that I display, whether it be a song 
whether it be a jersey, whether it be a hat, whether it be, you know, a jump shot, whether it be a move I make, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to say I need it in life, but you know, somebody says, man, that's that thing you did right there, man, that brought joy to me. I'm appreciative not of the compliment to me, but appreciative that shit, what I could do could be a, a you know a hot point or or a beacon or like a, a, a hot spot in your day. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I do with other people. If I see somebody else, with they, if I see a nigga with some fly low, that nigga, that shit hard. If I think I'm going to tell a nigga off top, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give a nigga his note. Get me on his note, you know, or a chick or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give a nigga note because that's just, I think it's player, bro. Players do. Man. Oh, know, I don't mind doing that. You know what I'm saying? Of- but what I will say is I don't care about the validation part. I do like, I do like, yeah. um, I, I do like, I do like uh, maybe m- maybe being around like-minded individuals. So you know, I'm like, let's say if I if I walk in a coffee house, uh, and someone's like, "Hey, that remarkable tool is kind of cool." Oh yeah, you got a remarkable tool as well. And then we speak about how we use uh, said piece of tech to you know uh, kind of organize our day and you know why we bought it the things we like about it the pros and the cons i enjoy engaging in that type of conversation uh that's cool you know what i'm saying mm. if i walk into uh you know the club or whatever and homie be like hey bro those some fire 11s them cool grays bro i wasn't able to get them man them hoes kind of fire and we sound we talk about sneaker collections that's cool i like that i'm not looking for the validation but the actual uh, I, I conversation with a like-minded I person that's I cool I, no 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 I get it. That's but what I'm saying. Bitch, and that, 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 bitch, I'm, I'm the shit. So you know what I'm talking about. You, you know what I'm saying. I think. I think. I think. I think. What I was. I think it wasn't the validation part. What I was saying, but it was like knowing that you have an individual that understands the the the, the space that you're coming from. You know what I'm saying. When I when I pull up in the or if I, if I got the the, the throwback Nash on or the the. the, the, the the uh, be dismal, you know what I'm saying? For somebody be like, well, what? It's that Baron Davis. The validation is not really saying that you got it. It's like, oh shit, I fuck with that shit too. So it feel like it, it makes it makes it feel like we're two like minded individuals. So now that's really a, a space that we can connect in, and maybe we can I can see what else we have in common, or we probably have other things in common because you know birds of a feather they flock together, I guess. I mean, that's, I, I, I like, I like, I like, I like to meet, I like to meet people who play Pokemon Go as well as I do. But you know, it'd be cool. I've never played Pokemon in my life, man. I, 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 I just missed, I missed that one, man. I missed that, missed that, uh, I missed that way. You got I a phone? Know. You got, a, you got a phone, right? Yeah. Download the app. A Pokemon app, Pokemon app. Pokemon Go is is a is a mobile app. It's a mobile game. It was meant to get people uh-huh. out and moving. So you walk, you you go to pokey stops, uh you go to gyms, you have battles, uh, uh they have like with your hands and shit, you like you be Pokemon niggas or uh no. Have you watched oh. any episode of Pokemon or played any Pokemon game or card game? Never. Well Never it's it, it's like, you know, Magic the Gathering and all of these things. You go to gyms, you can throw your oh. Pokemon in the gym and they'll battle people who show up. You can uh, fight oh, oh, so go back, go, 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 go back. You say go to the gym. When you say go to the gym, what kind of gym am I going to? It's Pokemon battling gym. It's a virtual right, gym, okay, of course. So, so prime example, I'm okay, walking so, through the help me out. Let me, let me I, I for it. I'm walking through the heights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, yeah. I'm walking through the heights. I go to Ike Sandwich Shop. Have you been to Ike Sandwich Shop? No, you haven't. You gotta try it. Uh, 34. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have went on 34. No, so it's right there uh, off I ten, and I go down. It's like it's well, it's glass all around, right? It, it's on Heights Boulevard. Okay, it's across the street from Lola yeah. and and Anytime Fitness. Uh, and you know, I usually walk down Heights Boulevard, and so I'll stop in Ike's, get a sandwich. There's a gym right there. So the the gym is a virtual gym. You get your Pokemon. If you're a uh, Team Rocket or Team Red, then you could, and it's in that and that gym is red already. So if the gym is already a blood, then you can throw your Pokemon in there to be on, on Team Blood. And then, you know, random people will come try to defeat the gym and then, you know, change it to their team's color and and, and then it'd be their team turf. 
Uh, also, some of these gyms, when you when you spend the Pokey Stop, you know you can get prizes to send other friends. Uh, you get eggs to hatch to get new Pokemon, and then while you're walking, you can capture new Pokemon. Like right now, it's fall time, so you're getting a lot of Halloween themed Pokemon. Uh, I don't like cool. how you made it. Pokemon. I don't like how you just hooded hood it out the whole thing. Like you made it blood and and, and you know, like they bloods and they. Well, because it's like it's team are, are Rocket. Blood? Blood. No, it's it's like it's like team something they red. I think another team is yellow, and then another team is blue. And then Team Rocket are like the thugs of Pokemon, uh, and and they colors is black and red. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, and so you got them little goons, and then you got to do like little little uh little side missions too, and it's all meant for you to walk. And so sometimes after you do a certain amount of raids, you get premium raid passes where it'd be like a it'd be like a a a, a Pokemon is a, a rare Pokemon. So, you know, you get the premium raid invite. You got to be at this gym at this time on this date. And then you get there and it'd be like 40 people out there, bro. 30 people out there. And it'd take that many people to take down this this Pokemon. It might be like a Mewtwo or something. You know what I'm saying? Some Dude, fire bitches. type shit. Dude, hold on. Dude, do bitches. Bitches are wrong. And so then, you know what I'm talking it's about? Bitches, bitches there. I mean, it'd be it'd be some nerdy Pokemon bitches, fat ass bitches. You know what I'm talking about? It'd be all walks of that's what's so fire about it because it's like all walks of life, bro. Like you might be, it might be an accountant, a mechanic, uh, 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 um, uh, a home mom with her three kids. Uh, it might be home a judge. Mom. What you call them? A homemaker. It might be a judge. Uh, it might be a, a D boy. It might be a uh, a samurai, like bro, it'd be every every walk of life out there, bro. Just, oh yeah, man, we're gonna get this one. Then y'all 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 speak about it. You know what I'm talking about? That's the beauty of games, bro. The beauty of games is that it has united people from their 50s to their six. Yeah, like minded individuals, bro. And we all playing like NCAA 25. You know what I'm saying? Or you go to Comic Con and you're united by Marvel and Pokemon. And you know, Sailor Moon, some shit like that. You watch anime? All right, but do you watch anime? Like, yeah, I mean, some like Castlevania, and I mean, it depends. You know, what I'm saying I would say you got, you got to hop on that Crunchyroll. You don't watch like the Japanese shit, and and you got to read the subtitles and and all that. No, that's, I don't. I, 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 that's too much. I'm sorry to hear that. That's too much for me. I would say last topic before we get off, man. Um, I talk about it, man. Lil Wayne and Super Think about that. Lil Wayne and the Super Bowl? I don't know. I got I got mixed feelings about it because it's New Orleans. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's New Orleans. It's Lil Wayne. Uh, he expressed that he wanted to do the Super Bowl in New Orleans this year coming up. For whatever yeah. reason, they chose to, to go a different way and go with Kendrick Lamar. I don't think any of the frustration is towards Kendrick Lamar being the performer. I think all of the frustration is really the fact that Wayne isn't the performer. Um, yeah. So I don't have a, I don't have an angle of it should be Wayne over Kendrick because I feel like Kendrick doesn't have a catalog that can do a Super Bowl thing. I, I don't, I don't have that take. Um, I just wish it could have been Wayne, but. Clearly, I guess the business of it, one Wayne. Some people had health concerns. Some people like is Wayne healthy enough to do the Super Bowl set. Uh, some right. people said, well, I'm just telling you what it was brought up because you know earlier this year Wayne was kind of you know bloated in the face and shit. He looked a little sick. Uh, he clearly has has gotten his health better now um, than he was earlier this year. Uh, some yeah. of it was, you know, Wayne has been, Wayne has said himself that he don't be knowing the lyrics to his song. He's done some shows where he ain't know the lyrics. I mean, he, he, he did WrestleMania a couple of months ago and it was a, a, it was a horrible performance, but the other piece is it was WrestleMania. It probably was just a quick dollar. I mean, he didn't do no real set. He literally just rapped while Jay Uso came down the ramp. So, uh, you know, that really was just them playing his music and him running around with a hoodie on rapping. Um, 
I think if he did Super Bowl, it would have turned into a Young Money Cash Money show. I feel like if he did the Super Bowl, if he if if Wayne did the Super Bowl, Nikki and Drake definitely was coming out. And I don't I don't believe in or buy into the conspiracies of any of that shit. Uh, I just honestly think to the industry, K Dot is hot. I think they saw what that Amazon show did, and the NFL, who's also partnering with Amazon as well, probably said his his Amazon show did X amount of numbers. He probably can replicate it. The Dr. Dre show did X amount of numbers. It'll probably be something similar, and maybe they felt like the business was best to have Kendrick Lamar coming off whatever run he's had, whatever popularity he has right now. I guess they're trying to, you know, strike while the iron is hot. I would have rather saw Lil Wayne, but that's me. I'm a Lil Wayne fan, so. I think, okay, so that's the interesting thing about this whole situation to me is the internet, the internet thing and get to investigating so many times because we have so much access to information and knowledge at this point we end up learning things that we didn't know on accident so for the last uh what six years seven years the whole thing is jay-z is the guru but he's he's the person who picks the you know he's the one that entertain it for he don't, the it ain't, it ain't, he don't solve the it. ticket though no, no no that's what we know now but for the last you know four at least four or five years, but like, yeah, Jay-Z be doing a great job picking acts, you know what I'm saying? He's on a place. committee, he's on a committee and he has influence. So yes, he's on a committee A, he has influence B. If if Jay-Z would have probably said no, it's Wayne, he probably I don't like, think like so. he I think from no, from, you don't from, I don't think you get I don't think you get information that, that they put out. From information they put out, Jay Z doesn't have any say so on who gets on it. The, the, the hosting city has a committee they that do. picks the host. They yeah. Do. He's he so so for all of well, they, they pick the host. Is, I don't I don't I, yeah. I think he's I think he's a part of a committee who picks the actual uh performer, but however, he doesn't have the final say. I'll, I'll, yeah, he I'm doesn't saying, have I'm the, he has some influence, but he don't have the final say. I mean, how much influence does he have? You don't get a Dr. Dre show in LA without Jay Z's influence. Huh? No, but that, that's that's Jay Z. That's documented. Think Jay Z was. Hold up. You think that Jay Z was the one that had the influence to get Dr. Dre on the LA show? Yeah, that was documented. He actually he did. One thousand percent. That's documented. Jay Z had the influence, but Dr. Dre on the LA show. Yeah. Sense, but well, I may be saying I mean, why does it not make sense? Because the so, Dr. So, so, so you don't that, think you don't think that Jay Z's input hasn't been hasn't been important when you look at the last four Super Bowl acts and how we got them? You don't think that he hasn't had any sort of influence in that? Okay. No, I think that I think that Jay Z is what he is in every aspect. He's a product ambassador, bro. He's and on a he he is on he is literally on the Super Bowl halftime show committee. So he has some sort of influence on who performs at these shows. He doesn't have the final say, and that's documented. He doesn't have the final say. So he can't say, you know what? How much Wayne, influence does he have? He can't say, look, I don't know how much influence he has, but what I'm saying yeah, is... Yeah, so it could be 5% or it could be 9%. It doesn't now. matter if he has 1% influence. He has some sort of influence and input Man, within... How is it crazy? He he has... You a, say it don't matter if he has like, 1%. Like, like, we, like we all say, we, we want to seat at the table. So we have a guy who is a representation of what we like to call our culture who has a seat at said table. So he has some influence on what happens. He doesn't have the final say. Yes, okay, influence. You don't have. You don't. You don't have no. Bro. Honestly, okay. I don't think not, that. Oh, honestly, hold on, hold on. I don't think that we. Honestly, I don't think that we can say that he has or doesn't have influence because we're not in these meetings. We don't know what type of um, influence or impact that he has on 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 this on this situation. We don't. We hey, don't know. Hey, what, 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 what I was saying, it was discovered. 
that Jay-Z doesn't have any influence on, he had no influence on who played in New Orleans, in the New Orleans uh, Super Bowl. There was a committee, and they even had a committee member spaces and names who the people who chose was going to be. And so what I was going to say was, Jay-Z is what he is in every aspect in most days. He's a, he's a figurehead. He's a, he's a product brand ambassador. And so what they do, what companies do is they put his face on it. Boom, just like they did that. Then he got out of the road. Like they did, um, like they do uh, John McEnroe with, 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 uh, uh, um, and like they do, it's the product ambassador. Like my face is recognizable to a bunch of people. So what was, what was his official what was, what was his official title when he had the um when he had the press conference with Roger Goodell? Uh, I don't know. What, what was Daisy was named the co-producer of the Super Bowl halftime show in 2019 at the Harlem with yeah, co-producer. So if he's a co-producer of NFL halftime shows. Yes, he has a seat at the table. He has some influence and input. Yes, it is true that the whole city picks the halftime performers. But as a co-producer of said halftime show, I'm pretty sure Jay-Z has some sort of influence when it comes to the halftime show. Now, he can't say, play this person or don't play this person. Like, he can't say that in its law. But I'm pretty sure... When this happens, Jay Z being an entertainer, being the how we how he is held in the music industry is what he is, has some sort of input or influence in what's going on. Like if I am a whole city, yes, if, I, if, if, yes, if, if, if yes, I if I am, none. can I finish? Look, I'm reading it right now. He has can, done. Can I finish? I'm reading it right now. I understand what Wait. you're reading, but can I finish? All right. So go ahead, go ahead, sir. If if I am on the host committee of 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 Houston and we're having the NBA basketball game coming here. And James Boogie is the producer of the NBA basketball dunk contest. Okay. I have the say in who plays the dunk contest. But as having young James Boogie on my team as a producer of the dunk contest, I would be a fool if I didn't consult with him for his input. Now you don't have the the power to make a final decision, but I'm pretty sure you can say, "Dub, you know what? It'd be pretty fire if you had Harold Miner in this in this dunk contest along with Dominique Wilkins." And I'd be like, "You know what? Right, bro? Because them boys can jump high as hell." You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying he has the yeah. final say or the say, but yeah. it's Jay Z. Yeah. And if Jay Z is speaking about a performer these people, are, they're going to listen. Now, they can go on one ear and not the other. But he he has some type of influence in these rooms. If he didn't, he wouldn't be in the room. That's all I'm saying. But I don't think... I, I, okay. from, from, I understand what you're saying. The official title says he doesn't have any... I ain't decision. said it yet. I no, didn't well, say it because, yet. Because you said it, it early. No, because you said it early. Let like, me say no, it, though. Can I finish? Me, oh, we're, just, we're just having a conversation, go, bro. Go, 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 go. I'm not knocking what go, you're go, saying. Go, go I'm ahead. not saying you're saying anything wrong. No, I'm but sorry. I didn't even say it. What I was gonna say. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead sir. I'm no, not trying to dump you away. I don't have nothing to say. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna say for the NFL, it says that the NFL nor Jay Z have they don't choose who the former is at the halftime show. Uh the cities and um, it says, uh, the host, the host. City has a committee that picks and they ask the NFL and the producers for a short list of eligible performers. So, as you said, he has it. He might have a say, or he may have, I don't know, to say, to say that I could be like, hey, pick out of these guys, but they don't have any final say or they don't pick. Gotcha. I don't know. Like I said, that don't make sense. Bro. Like that's this. Well, what part of it doesn't make sense? It, Tell me what part does no, not make that, sense to you. No, that that's 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 that is on that's on key and on point and that's on code 
I don't know what none of that Check means. I want to know what doesn't make sense to you. I don't know what on key, on point, on code. I don't know what that means. I want to know when you're saying that doesn't make Jay-Z. sense. Jay-Z. What doesn't okay. make sense to what, you? What, what, okay. What happens with hip hop in particular is that the audience is so uninformed about business procedures and about the workings. It's that big companies come in and grab a face and put the face, put that face in front of you. Would Jay Z be the face that they put turns. in front of us? Talking about would Jay Z be the face that, they put in front of us? Who would be the face that they put, the in front? put in front of us? Cool. All right. So Jay Z is the yeah. place. Jay Z is the face that the NFL put in front of us, right? No, Jay Z is the face that the NFL decided to use. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. So yeah, Jay Z is yes. the face that the NFL put in front of us. My question to you is. What don't make sense to you? Because I don't know what you mean by when you said it don't make sense. What part of this doesn't make sense to you? What I'm saying is it doesn't make sense to say that he's in the room or saying that he's he's a, he has a he doesn't have a say because it's not a, it's not his position is not to have a say. His position, for the most part, like with most things he does, is to be a figurehead. Okay, look at JC. He wears Rockefeller. He wears Rockefeller. Rockefeller. He had nothing to do with the inception of it. He had nothing to do with the idea. But we put his face on it and they can wear it. Oh, yeah, JC wears it, so I wear it. Oh, look at, you know, like you said, you got all these units, Reeboks. He ain't designed them. He ain't had the idea. Reebok called him, like, hey, we got some shoes. We'll give you X five dollars to put your face on them. And we'll sell, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's the same thing. He ain't like the reason why I I the reason why I think that Jay Z doesn't have a say so or a input that matters in these rooms because why haven't they had any? Jay Z is is if nothing else, he he real. You know what I'm saying? Like you, there would have been. Some rock, a Rockefeller reunion. It have been some. It have been some stuff that you can like. Oh yeah, shit. you know what I'm saying. It have been, what, you know what, 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 what what Rockefeller reunion would he have, and when when would he have this? Explain and, to me and, who and, he's going to reunion with. You pick it. Who he going to reunion with? It's, okay, so 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 the deal that Rock Nation made with when Rockefeller broke up was that he couldn't sign none of. His Rockefeller, so he couldn't sign Cam, couldn't sign uh, Freeway, couldn't sign none of the artists that were on Rockefeller to Rock Nation. That was a deal that made that was that was part of the deal, right? So if I'm in this whole separate hold situation, on. hold on, hold on, let me stop. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, my question yeah. would be because I feel like we got off subject. Damn, to see you to confuse me. My question is. I'm going back to the NFL. If, if, no, I, I, I don't want to. My question is, if he is a co-producer and he doesn't yeah. have, we've read that he doesn't have the final say. However, yeah. the whole city is the city with a committee who picks acts. So I would say the whole city will go to the table with maybe four to five acts that they would like to see represent their city in the Super Bowl halftime show. And they're going to go That's sit down. Huh? Well, I know they just That's didn't go. I, don't we don't know. Up, come on. I know they just didn't roll up in there with Kendrick Lamar, and that's it. So I would assume, I would assume they might have that they had because what well, you just said, you you just read that the whole city will go with a list of artists to the to to yeah. the to the table, and then they would have input. And as a co-producer, he would have input, but ultimately, he he nor the NFL has the final say, it's the whole city. So when people say he has a seat at the table, he has a seat at the table because he's listed as a co-producer of the halftime show or whatever it is they call it. He just doesn't have final say of Definitely. yes or no. The whole city has final say of yes or no. So he has input, but he, he doesn't. He can't make the final say. After they say, you know what, Jay? Yeah, we, we talked to you about Lady Gaga, Beyonce, and 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 uh, Machine Gun Kelly, we think we're gonna roll with Lady Gaga. Boom. Now I feel like his job comes in to help co-produce 
the halftime show for Lady Gaga. Now, it might be him standing on the sideline in the Rock Nation or Rockefeller jacket with his kid uh, clapping um, and saying, ha, 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 yeah, you know, I like the way the stage is set up. It might be that. But I don't, I'm pretty sure he has some say. Or some, not say, some input. Like, yeah, you know, I think Kendrick Lamar would be pretty great. You know, he, he had a nice uh, small set when we did the L.A. show. He just did these crazy numbers at Amazon with his L.A. show he did uh, a couple of months ago. And I'm pretty sure he can he can put on a hell of a show again. Well, I mean, I mean that those questions, like, because what I'm saying is, for the, like, the two questions you have to ask is, what is production of the Super Bowl half? What is production of the Super Bowl halftime show? And what all the, how, now, three questions. How many producers are, are there of the Super Bowl halftime show? I'm pretty sure there are many. Is it 20? I don't think Jay-Z you know is that hands-on. To be, to be honest, I don't think Jay-Z is that hands-on with any of this, if you want to be honest about it. I I have my Okay, so in... in, in, in uh, story. But I do believe that we Just don't see... Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I do <laughs> believe... But I, I do believe we don't see a pregnant Rihanna playing the Super Bowl without Jay-Z's input. I'll say that. I don't think we get Jay Z. I don't think we get Dr. Dre, Snoop, Fifty, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Oh, with, that, with, that a, don't make sense with, with a with a Compton with, with with a Compton map on on the Super Bowl halftime show without Jay Z's input because that isn't the demographic that the Super Bowl is appealing to. The demographic, hey, pe- LA, the bro, demo, hey, the, 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 wood, man. first off. The Super Bowl was in Inglewood, but every demographic of person that they're marketing to ain't from Inglewood. When you look in the stands of the Super Bowl, you don't see. That don't make sense, bro. It makes. That don't make sense. How much? How much? Let me ask you a question. I'll ask you this real question. Make no sense, man. I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you a question. How much That's does? Question. Yeah. How much does a Super Bowl ticket cost? Uh, anywhere from like three thousand to fifteen to seventeen thousand. Now I'll ask you this. Uh. Is that marketed to the common man or no? No. Jerry you, World. You, you no, when they was in Vegas, bro, when they had a you, million you dollar the whole suite. Part, part, though. They had a you million dollar. The they part. had a million what dollar got, suite on the ground level in Vegas. What they got? What they got? What they got to do with, with with television sales and how popular hip hop is, man? What that? What what you're talking about? The the Super Bowl, as in. The, the, the people that are coming. I'm talking about that the Super Bowl is being marketed across the world. The biggest genre of, mis- of, 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 of music in the world is hip hop. And how they long, in and LA. How, well, talk about, and how long have we had a presence at the halftime show of the Super Bowl? Please tell me. How long have we had the presence? Last, for the last 10 years. Okay, go back 10 years and tell me which hip hop which hip hop uh, performer performed at the Super Bowl 10 years ago. So that would be 2014. Who was the Super Bowl performer in 2014? Let me go see. Might have been Big Boy in Atlanta. Or Bush Cobb. 2014 Atlanta. book? I don't know, man. I'm going to go look. I don't know. I'll pop my head, my <laughs> <laughs> 2014 was... was like four uh, years uh, ago, bro. Okay, 2014 was uh, Bruno Mars, my nigga. Is Bruno Mars hip-hop? No. Bruno Mars is pop, right? Next year, okay. Well, hold on. What about 2013? Next year, though. What do we get 2013? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look right now. I don't know. I'm top of my head, man. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I tell you what. 2014 was no. Nah, well, 2014 was Bruno Mars. 2013. But was, Bruno Mars was, didn't headline the Super Bowl by itself, did he? Yeah. Who was 2013? 13 was. 13. 2013 was and then Beyonce did what she got 2013 too. Beyonce is not hip hop. She's pop or R and B, if whatever you want to call it. Uh-huh. But go ahead. Yeah. What was 2013? Beyonce, man. What was that? New Orleans, right? Saying Destiny Child. What was that? 2013. Yeah. New Orleans, they, right? They were in... Yeah, yeah. So 2013 Beyonce, 2014 Bruno Mars, 2015. Producer was Ricky Krishner. We had 2015. Yeah, okay. 
Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Uh, this is no, uh, no. This is important. Who no, have, no. This is this is important. Though, who do we have twenty fifteen? I'm just, I'm just wondering. Who let's do we have twenty fifteen? Let's clean it up. Let's clean it up to kind of make sure we we put Jay Z in this too, right? I was I'm getting to that. That's why it's important to figure okay. out what we had in those years. That's why I said it was 2015, 2016, 2017. I feel like he 14, didn't even get the spot until after Mars. Atlanta. Because during, during the Atlanta Super Bowl, he was telling Perjamain Dupree and some other people, he was he was in, encouraging uh, acts of hip-hop not to, do it. not to do it, just to turn around and find yeah. out he did a deal with the NFL. And that was, what, maybe four years ago? How long has he had this position? Has it been four years? Has it been five years? I'm not sure. So that's why it's important to see. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you, I'm going with you sir. I don't want to be. 2017 was Eddie Gaga. Okay. 2018 was Justin Timberlake. Okay. Hold on, hold on. But he had, he had some people on there. It was Justin Timberlake. But Justin Timberlake was the headline. It was his show. Yeah, he yeah, might have yeah. brought some friends out. Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And wasn't that in Houston again? I could be wrong. Um, that was in Minnesota. Okay. No, I was in uh, yeah, Minnesota, Minnesota, yeah. Okay, who's next? Uh, 19 was... It's a rock band. It came to the place. Travis, no. That was Maroon 5. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Yeah. Time out. Are you sure Justin Timberlake was in Minnesota? Because I thought Prince was in. What was Prince where it started raining? Yeah, it couldn't have been Minnesota because Minnesota is not an outdoor stadium in February. It's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, my bad. Uh, talk to yourself. Um. What year are we in? We in 2019. 20, who's who's 2019? 2020. No, we in 2019. Was, uh, 2019 was. I just said it, man. But you going? I forgot who it was. It's on your phone. But 2020 right? was. I went. I just moved on from that, man. Twenty twenty was Jennifer Lopez. 2020, 2019 was uh Maroon Five. Okay, still not hip hop or rap. It's still pop. Yeah. Okay, then then twenty twenty we had who? Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Oh, we had we had Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. That was that was okay. Then twenty one, what do we have? That was that was that was a uh, Bad Bunny and all that. And what were they at twenty twenty? In twenty twenty one, what state? What host state was that? Uh, that was in Florida. Miami was it in Miami? Florida. Yeah, that makes sense. If it was Bad Bunny in Miami. So 2022, what no, was no, it? Went, yeah, yeah. Miami, because the next year, next year was in Tampa. 2022 was in and Tampa? Was the, 2021 was in Tampa. 2020 nice. was in Miami. Okay. 2021 was in Tampa. Who? Was who and that was the weekend. Okay, we're getting, we're getting we're getting hip hop ish. We're getting hip hop ish. That's the person with Jay Z. That's the person with Jay Z. So 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 Tampa, the weekend, twenty twenty what? Yeah, twenty twenty one. And and uh, on your phone there is telling you that Jay Z was credited as a co producer there. That's that's the first one with Jay Z was a co producer. Yeah. All so right, Jay Z, NFL Network, and Rock Nation. Cool. Then twenty twenty two, who we got? Got. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Mary J, and um, Kendrick Lamar. The Man, special we, guest, 50 Cent and Anderson Park. That's what it says. Okay, because Anderson Park is a producer. And pro- we got 2023. And, hold on. And the producer is Jesse Collins of Rock Nation. Jay-Z on the producer. Well, Jay-Z's Rock Nation. You know. Who we got 2023? No, he's not. Who we got 2023? We have uh, Rihanna. Mm-hmm. Sir, it's Jesse Collins and Rock Nation. Something not right, bro, because Usher was 2023 in Phoenix. Usher, oh, you know what? Usher that was, was 2024 20... Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking yeah, like 2023, yeah. 2024. Okay. Cool. And, and that then was Alicia Keys, Jermaine Dupree, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, Usher was the headline. He just brought out friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He brought he brought out uh, Alicia Keys, Jermaine Dupree, her, Will I Am, Lil John, and Chris. Uh, Cool. So it sounds like from 2021 is when we had the um, hip hop influence start with the addition yeah. to Jay Z and Rock Nation. So that is to me a direct example of having someone who represents what we call the hip hop culture 
having to see that at the table. And now rolling into 2025. You, you, hold on, hold on. Now rolling into 2025, you, we got we got Kendrick Lamar. Are you familiar with what Rock Nation is? I know exactly what Rock Nation is. Rock Nation in your estimation. Rock Nation is a label of representation of artists who has ties with Live Nation, who puts on shows at venues, and Rock Nation has a deal with Live Nation, and that's why a lot of Rock Nation artists are assigned to them, and they they go on different tours. So they have a deal with a venue, a touring venue. But it's late. So how you feel about Kendrick Lamar? No, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. How you feel about? Are you excited about the Kendrick Lamar show or not? Rock Nation. Now, Rock Nation is so you're not you're not excited uh, about the Kendrick Lamar show. Hold on, let, let, let me finish, yeah. man. I, I just want to know if you're excited is, about the Kendrick Lamar show. Why are you coming? I I I let you cook. I ain't, I ain't cut you out, man. I mean, I just want to know if you're excited about. But I ain't cut you out. I let you cook, baby. You know what I'm saying? I just want to know if you're excited about the Kendrick Lamar show. See, but see, you just told me that I I, I can't get a, a two minute cook. You got to cook. I ain't you know what I'm saying. I I I'll let you cook for like ten minutes, bro. I ain't cooked it all. I've been even we have, talking. We have we have moved from the question we were talking about. I just want to know if you. I just want to know. So, I just want to know how excited about Kendrick Lamar. So I, I gotta just say. I gotta say. I gotta talk. I would like to know how excited okay. about Kendrick Lamar you are. That's what I would like to know. Like, I don't really care. I'm sorry. I don't want to say that because that sounds selfish. I think the politics of it all is, you know the minutia of it. I just would like to know how you feel about that. That's important. No, that's, that's important. That's what I'm saying. I, I just, well, I'm I would saying like to know to you, to about... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. I would, I would, no, I would, I would like to know as, as, No, I know you, you said the same I mean, thing, but I tried to I would, look, let me say. I would, I would like to know as far as like, how do you feel about Kendrick Lamar performing at Super Bowl. So because you don't feel supporting, or because you don't, because you don't care about it, I mean, I gotta be quiet about it because you don't care about it. No, I mean, go ahead and say what you want to say. I feel like the politics are. I feel like the, the politics are important because the, the the face value of the politics make it seem one way, but the actuality could be another way. So I understand. I, 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 I think Ooh, stay, there, stay, there, stay, there. stay there. I would like to know yeah. what are the politics yeah. of it. So what are the politics that are being that are that are being played when it comes to Kendrick Lamar doing a Super Bowl and not winning? I would like to know that. Well. I'm not sure. I don't think Wayne is a it's a Rock Nation artist. And 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 Rock Nation is a is is a is for all intents and purposes a subsidiary of Live Nation. Yes. Rock Nation is really just like the the hip hop wing of Live Nation. And what Live Nation does is buy up all the, the venues so that if you're not on Live Nation or Rock Nation or whatever other nation they have attached to them, you can't perform in big venues and you kind of hold in your audience. So wait, wait hold on. Wait, not being Kendrick on. Lamar is not a Rock Nation uh, uh, act, though. So is neither it, Kendrick is, Lamar, is, 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 neither, Ken, neither Kendrick Lamar or Wayne are Rock Nation artists, though. Is he on Live Nation? I don't believe so. I know he's on PG Lane, no, no, no. and I think he still has um, some ties with. Yeah, him. he's on Live Nation. He's on Live Nation. Are you sure he's on Live Nation? Yeah, I'm looking at it because he's online. He got Live Nation tour dates. Well, hold on, time out, time out, time out. How many artists? The only have Live art, the only X, the only X on Live Nation tour dates have. To, you have to have a contract with Live Nation to do Live Nation. That was the the um, grateful. Dead's entire argument. The Great for Dead was like, we don't want to sign the Live Nation, so Live Nation wouldn't do, wouldn't let them know in no venues. The only artists they have on their show, on their venues, are artists they have deals with them. Is Wayne a Live Nation artist? See, see, he is. Okay, so that. Oh, no, that no, 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 no. Okay, he signed. He signed. He signed. Uh, he has, yeah, he might. Oh no, what's the? I'm saying I should go to what? What's the? What's the Rock Nation roster, right? That's the smart thing to do. What's the who? The Rock Nation roster. Oh, we talking about Rock Nation or Live Nation? 
I understand Rock Nation is a subsidiary of Live Nation, but are we talking about Rock Nation or Live Nation? About Live Nation. So is Kendrick Lamar a Live Nation artist? Per yes. per your is Wayne a Live Nation artist per your information there? Well, that's... So we know Kendrick is, but you don't know if Wayne still is. I don't know if Wayne still is. is. Who's the first still is? That's crazy. That's crazy. So, uh-huh. so if they're if they're both live, if they we can safely say they both have Live Nation affiliation. So that shit ties. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so x that out again. What would be the politics at play here that would grant Kendrick Lamar the the nod and Wayne not the nod? Since since you said since you said the poli- the politics are important, which I'm not I'm not disputing that. Yeah. If you say the politics yeah. are important, I, I think then what what are those politics? I think that there's probably it's probably Wallace politics, it's probably Jay Z Wayne politics, because there was a time when Jay Z was trying to sign Wayne. But he paid his taxes. And so Wayne. I don't think he hates Wayne. So again, I would say I didn't, I, I didn't say none of that. Man. Again, but about, again, I, mean, I would ask if 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 the politics are important, we, yeah. we got we we gotta be able to identify what the politics are. If they're if, if the politics are that important, yeah, then we have to be you able to that, identify you don't think that, hold on. We would have to be able to you identify think, what the politics are. Yeah. But you don't think that Jay Z paid the way taxes with the thought that I paid your taxes, you're gonna sign to me? But again, if he did we, sign to Rock Nation. But time on but for a period of time, yeah. But time on again. If we yeah. ro- it, and and this is something that you brought up. If we're rolling with the theory that Jay doesn't have any type of say. Then it did. It, it won't matter if Jay Z has any kind of kind of politics and situation where he would not want Wayne to perform for whatever reason, because he ain't got the final say. Yes. You told me he but don't he have the final well, say. When I when I said Jay Z has when I said Jay Z had some sort of influence because he had a seat at the table, you told me it don't make sense. Yeah. So if you're yeah. telling me that don't make sense, I don't think you can double back. And no, then, no, no, no. Let I me said, finish. Oh, oh, let me finish. Oh, yeah, I don't oh, think oh, yeah. that you can then double back and say, well, the politics are important, and this is why. And now Jay Z has a play in the politicking that could be important when we've already established a hey, he don't have a final say, and you said it don't make sense that he has a seat at the table to have influence. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it don't make sense to say that his percentage of his influence don't matter. That's what I said. I said, you said... You it said matter. it didn't matter. You're the one who said it didn't matter. Oh, I, didn't say, I didn't say his influence didn't I, matter. I, you I, no, you... Yeah, no, I, I said, I know, I I said, said he has matter. influence. Oh. I said... Time out. I remember what I said now. I said, yeah. Jay-Z yeah. has some sort of influence, and you told me he don't. You said he has no influence. And it, you said it makes no sense that he has said, it at the table. That's no. what you said. I never said. No, I said. I never no, said no, he I didn't said, have the influence. I said when you said he might have, he might have one percent. I said it don't make sense him having one percent or like said. it doesn't. That yeah, that it's not what I said. That is not what well, we said. can go back and look at it my later. My words were. My words were. I said he has some sort of influence, and I don't know if it's one percent or ten yeah. percent. But he has some sort of influence. That's what I said. And you said well, you and don't I, have and that, you, and I, no, you right, you're right. You said he don't on, have no there. influence. But you said he don't no, have no, no, no influence. I said that is what I you said. said. I said okay. And I also said and in response to when you said he might have one percent, I said, Well, that don't make sense. Nah, having one percent influence. Not you're not responding to the one percent. I said, I don't know how I, much if I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm responding to because I heard what you said. My words were yeah, I don't but know you know, how okay. much influence he had. And this could be the perception thing that we talked about last part, where sometimes you're saying one thing and people don't understand what you're saying. But I said, I don't know how much influence he has. And I just said, look, he had one. But that, what, what, what that mean? Oh, right there, right there. Oh, right there. What that mean, bro? How I'm going to say something like, I don't know how much influence he has, but the percentage of influence you have is super fucking important, bro. Saying that, like, I don't have, I, I have, look, in, in the businesses that I run and I'm with, I have this much, I have 45, 50% influence. That's important as opposed to somebody else who has 1% influence. That's super fucking important, right? 
You said he had zero, and you said it made I'm no asking sense. you a question. I'm asking you a question. If though, I have one percent influence, yes, my one percent influence matters. If I have one percent, if you have forty five percent, you have matters more to who than I do. It matters to the situation because my one percent oh, so, influence. Time out. My one percent influence can be the percentage of influence that it takes to get something passed, to get something done. Stop the fucking cap, my nigga. So how many times has Hold on, no. How many times has one percent influence? How many times has one percent influence in eighty nine? When you talking about an equal shit, that don't make sense. You don't even know. You can't even speak to it. I can. Did how many times in your time life time has one percent? It has a plenty of times. Okay, plenty of times. The, the, the my one percent. I have been in one percent. Let me finish. Let me finish because you're asking me a question now, and don't try to move the goalpost and skew it. I've I'm been in rooms. I've been in rooms, and I've sat at tables where I've been in rooms where people who had way more influence and decision making power than I did, but because I had a seat at said table and I was able to articulate the plan that I wanted to do or what we were trying to get done. I had some sort of sway and influence in what we were doing. So yes, if you have a, a seat at the table and you have 1% influence over 0% influence over here, you have an opportunity to influence the situation. Now, we're actually arguing semantics because I didn't say the 1% gets things done. My words were Jay-Z has some sort of influence at this table in this situation. I don't know if it's 1%, or more. That's what I said. Now, if you want to get hung up on me saying 1%, that's fine. But when I made the statement, your words were, he ain't got no say, he ain't got no influence. That that don't make sense. That's the words you told me. And so my only question was, how do we get from that, from that take to now double back? I'm not disagreeing with you when you say the politics matters, but when you say the politics matters and I ask you, well, how do they matter and why? Then you tell me Jay Z's influence. It can't be both ways. Oh, okay. can if you I, don't I, think I, he I, had is, influence, can I, can I if, you don't, if you, if you don't, and I'm gonna finish. If you don't think he had influence okay. over here, then you can't tell me the politics matter because he has influence over there. It's either he has influence or he doesn't. And then we have to identify which politics you're speaking of that matter. That's okay. It. So, okay, I'm with you. He got one percent influence. I'm gonna ride with you. He got one. He has 10% influence. I'm going to get more than one, right? He don't have the final say. They drop a name. The politics between him and Wayne is not good. So when they drop Wayne's name, he don't have nothing good to say about Wayne in these rooms. So then his, the politics of him and Wayne not having a good relationship or him not, or I paid for his taxes and he ain't signed with me. Politics trickle down to now when this opportunity comes back, Jay Z could have been number one. Um, he could have been the person saying, "She is not one. It's got to be Wayne." His one percent or his ten percent or whatever percent he have could have been a hundred for Wayne. His one percent or ten percent or whatever he got could have been against Wayne, and whatever his influence is, even if it's no influence. Him just putting that in the air in that room. Oh, yeah, you're right. Again, because he has a seat at the table and he has influence over these decisions. And again, I'm not saying that that happened. I'm just saying that's the neither, importance neither. of having the seat at the table. That's all I said 30 the, minutes ago. And, and the, crazy, the crazy part about the whole situation is, the crazy part about the situation is our conversation it's, a, it's, it's about trying to include ourselves in some shit that we control. That's what makes the conversation skewed to me. Because it's like we're conversating, debating about how much control Jay Z might have or doesn't have over Wayne or over whatever situation that we should be in control of anyway. But again, like, I, don't, is, I don't, I don't. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. How how is it debate how is it even a debate whether Wayne is on Super Bowl in New Orleans? How's it even a debate? Well it should Why be. Why is it even a question? It should be a question. You should, should be you, no question. You, it should be a, it's, no, it should be a question. You should you Why? should be able if 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 I am if I'm producing a show for the Super Bowl 
And I, and that's why hey, I have a, that's why I have a planning committee in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that I have a planning committee in a talent selecting committee, I shouldn't just roll in there and only name on that paper is, 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 is the way I should roll in there. I, I didn't say Wait, that. No, I'm let me saying, finish. I'm, I didn't I say you said again. I didn't say you said that. I should be able to. I said that. I didn't say you said that. I never said that you said that. Yeah, I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying that if I'm going to New Orleans and Louisiana, and the most popular act to ever come out of this city, yeah, it's the one. It's it's a it's available to perform. I'm not even saying you got a headline. He's available to perform. Oh, and he nobody wants to said perform. he wasn't performing though. No, no one him performing isn't off the table. All I said okay, okay. him yeah, performing it's a, isn't off the it's table. The headline. The headline. The, yes. the, the most popular artist to ever come out of this region. Okay. Of this city. Okay. So that it wants the headline. Okay. And you saying that. The conversation shouldn't be well. How can we work this in to make this possible? You're you're, you're, you're asking me should, as somebody. As, time out. You, you're asking me as somebody that's on the committee. If I'm someone on the committee, when I walk into that meeting, yeah. everything that you just yeah. said about Wayne yeah. is going to be written down yeah. in my notes when I have uh, Dwayne Carter, the second name on the sheet of paper. Boom. He's going to be at the top of my list. New Orleans native. Uh, arguably the best rapper alive, uh, woo woo woo, you know what I'm saying? And then I might have three more names on my list, and and those are my names I'm coming into this meeting in. You're not gonna just go, and that's the only name. It, it clearly wasn't the only name on the list. I don't believe that this committee sat down and Wayne's name wasn't on the list. I don't believe that. But for whatever reason, for whatever decision that was made. When they walked out of the meeting, he wasn't chosen to be the headline. Kendrick Lamar was. That's it. So, again, yeah. if, you say the wow. if you if you if you say the politics, if you how about hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on how about this? How many artists you know played the Super Bowl twice? Hmm, that's a good question because I don't know. I want to say Beyonce did, but I might be wrong. I think anybody has. Twice? I don't think anybody has. Twice. 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 I don't think anybody has. Jermaine Dupree so probably don't right count because he just was a hype man in Atlanta. And then he came out with Usher and Phoenix. So that shouldn't count. Um, did Alicia Keys play the, the, the Super Bowl more than once? I don't know. I don't think someone has headlined more than once. Uh, well, Justin Timberlake played it twice. Tim Blake played it twice. Yeah. The, the debacle in Houston with the with Jenna Jackson and the titty. And then he had the headliner. He, he was, he, he was the headliner. You didn't ask me the just... headliner. You said, has anyone okay, played right, it right. twice? Yeah, okay. I feel like Beyonce has Houston. been at the Super Bowl more than once. I could be wrong, though, but I feel like she has. You might be right. I don't know. Now, you said you played it twice. Now, headline twice, I don't know. I'm say, what I'm saying is... But what are you getting at, it's though? Weird. When, you, when you say that, what are you getting I'm, at, though? I'm saying it's weird that you were a, you were an add-on in the Super Bowl years ago. Yeah, because Dre's a, a producer. Uh, He's not a legit rapper. So if you have Dre as the headlining performer, it's going to be a bunch of Cali artists that are notable. Goats. Yes. That part. Yeah. So so you went from an add-on in Super Bowl to a headliner. I feel like that's shady. Was, okay. Oh, no, I'm saying if, if like, for all intents and purposes, Snoop, Dre, and Eminem were the headliners of the Super Bowl. They I'll had the biggest that. roles. I'll huh? roll with that. Yeah, hey, I'll roll with that. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, 50 Cent, and Anderson Pack were like, they were like, they had like verses. Anderson Pack played drums too, though. So that's what he do. So. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But, People were like Snoop, Snoop. So you're telling me that your, 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 that shit crazy. That shit crazy. Well, no, finish. Please, please finish. Cause I, I think if you talk it through, you'll see why he got the nod for this year. I mean, he's, he's hot right now. No, he got, he's hot right now. He's on the street. The Amazon show did. 
stupid numbers, bro. That Amazon showed these stupid numbers, which I think that's skewed because I don't think you're going to get the same response uh, at a Super Bowl show that you got with that Super West Coast Cali show that you did for Amazon Prime. So that Amazon Prime show did stupid numbers, bro. And bro, you're not, you're you look not at the fact... Me, you look, nah, me, no, say what you're saying. me and you together... Me and you together are not smarter than the executives at um at Super Bowl, right? I don't know what that means. But me and you, I'm saying me and you know that if Lil Wayne Super Bowl, we know what that means. That means Nicki Minaj. That means Drake. It that does. means Baby. That means probably maybe a hot boy for Union. That means Matty Fresh. That means uh uh uh. I'll say this. Um, no, I'll say this. It, 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 you, know, you, you know what that means? It, Lil Wayne playing a Super Bowl means Lil Weezy Fest is going to go down in a couple of weeks. That's ex it's essentially what it is. Lil Wayne, what I'm saying. Super, Lil Wayne playing a Super Bowl is similar to what we thought we was going to get at Essence Fest a month or so ago. But what I'm saying is, me and you, people of the age of around 38 to 45, to us, that might be a fire show. But also, there's a demographic of people, and you can see by some of the responses and conversation on the internet, that don't feel the same way. They feel like because K Dot just came off of arguably winning beef with the the biggest rapper out, plus he came off this this crazy run of of Lucy's. His he has an album that's supposed to be coming out. They hold Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers up here. Plus, he's a Pulitzer Prize nobody, winner. Nobody like, uh, holds that album. Hold on, stop. No, you, you don't. Nobody you might not. No, no. That's not true. I'm not gonna let you do that. You might not. There are people. No, who hold, I'm saying, there are people who hold his catalog. I'm not saying that it is. Not his catalog. Not his catalog. That album. That uh, there are people who his hold catalog that album. is fire. That album is fire. That album is part that, of that album. That album was his worst selling album uh, out of all well, his albums. Time out. Yes, it was. Well, I don't know. I don't have the numbers in front of me. So if you're telling me it is, then I'll roll with what you're saying. I don't it 100% was. was. Oh, I don't know. If you're telling me it was, I'll roll with that. But my question, my yeah. thing is this. My, and we don't, I don't have time to fact check shit. If you're saying it is, it is. My thing is, there are people who who, who looking at K Dot as the GOAT. So to them, it was a smart business move. So it is what it is. It ain't Wayne is is Kendrick. Get over it. Now, do you think he gonna put on a good show? Like you are a boogie, you are the hip hop historian, you are rap aficionado. You live for this shit, bro. You you eat different is the words you told me. Do you think Kendrick Lamar? Do you think Kendrick Lamar can put on a fire classic Super Bowl performance? <laughs> I this you know, bro. I'm just asking. Do you think do you think, do you think he can put on a fire performance book? That's what I want to know. I just want to clarify some. I don't want to clarify the sales. It don't matter, bro. Sales, I would I would like to no matter. because the what sales don't matter. don't matter. The sales don't why matter. Don't I matter? Truly, because I really why would, don't matter. I'm telling you because I really would love. Why does why does it matter? I'm telling you again because I really would like to love to hear. If you believe Kendrick Lamar can really put on that classic standout Super Bowl performance that we think we would get from Wayne, but we have silence, folks. The, it topped out at book, 46. Book, book, book. Why, don't cut me off. I didn't cut you off. I didn't cut you off. Let me finish. Let me finish. You cut me off. You cut me off all the time, and you've already established that Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers was his worst selling project. Which I said, cool, I agree, uh, that's fine. So, we you've made that point. I really would like to know, Lovely. feel like Lovely. I really would like to know if you feel like Kendrick Lamar will be able to give us that classic standout Super Bowl performance that we know Wayne would give us. Do you think Kendrick can give it to us? It's ridiculous. Do I think, okay, so in essence, you asked me, do I think that Kendrick Lamar can do a better show than Wayne right now? That's not what I asked you. I didn't say if he could do a better show. I said, do you think he can give us a classic standout show? I didn't say who, I didn't say better. I said, do you think he can deliver a classic standout show at Super Bowl? I mean, that's, that's, that's interpretive, so. Again, I understand that, and I'm asking your opinion. I'm thinking, bro, I mean. Does he have 18 minutes worth of material that's fire? 
13. Yeah. 13. 13 minutes? Yeah. And 18? 13. 13? No. No? no. You don't think so? It's cool. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. 13 minutes? No. Because right. it's, it's the way his songs are built, it's too much build up. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like he's going to come out and do something that's going to be like, people like, oh shit. Like, it's it's the way his. He don't have no six foot, seven foot, eight foot. He don't have no song. Just his songs. It's this too. It's a lot of thinking going on in his songs. Not that it's bad or good. I'm just saying that, that his songs are not performing songs to begin with. Gotcha. See, it's gonna be good, but it's not gonna be classic though. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna be. I'm gonna ask you a question. What song, Kendrick Lamar, can you? Jam all the time. Could you win? You cut out. What song do you jam Kendrick Lamar every month? What song of Kendrick Lamar do I jam every month? I mean, if you ask me on today, I've actually been running back listening to Euphoria, uh, Meet the Grams, and Not Like Us. So I feel like he can't do the Super Bowl and then not be a fire show if he doesn't do not like us. And I've heard rumors that they don't want him to do not like us because of the pedo allegations. I would assume he would have to change up some lyrics to do it, but I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I heard this recent song he just dropped a couple of days ago and it was cool, but yeah, I don't he, see, he, I don't, I don't, I don't see me going back listening to that like once a month. I mean, you know, you get stuff like Section 80. I probably listen to the Section 80 project once a month. I might listen to the Backseat Freestyle once a month. Uh, Section might, 80 uh, once a month? Probably once a month. Because I have a playlist. And inside my playlist, you know, I have uh, High Powered in there. I got the collab with High him. High Powered on Section 80? Yeah. I don't know. I'm asking. I'm, I'm said yeah. Uh, I might have. What's your, what's your, what's your hardest Kendrick Lamar song? Huh? What the hardest? What's your favorite? So I'm sorry, I said the wrong one. What's your favorite Kendrick Lamar song? I mean, my favorite verse is the collab with him and Pusha T. But so that might. That. Uh, it's on Pusha's album. It's called uh, Nostalgia. I think Nostalgia. Yeah. I think mine is recipe or city. But uh yeah, city's cool. Backseat freestyle is kinda cool too. But you know, you know your recipe, right? I know exactly what the recipe is. I probably don't listen to it every month. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, the thing about Kendrick how about this? Thing about Kendrick that I that I really be tripping on for the most part of anything is like how you gonna be a nerdy gangbanger, man? Who said he was a nerdy gangbanger? How you when you hear nerdy self conscious gangbanger, man? He like just a dude. Be, he just like, he just a dude from Compton who has affiliation with Bloods, probably like everybody who from Compton. So I mean, I don't. What know. I'm saying. What you? I don't. Like you, 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 like you, why you does really that matter? It matters hundred percent because he's straddling the fence, man. Like, or he's just like living you. his lifestyle. Like you don't. I mean, you, how much about Kendrick Lamar do you truly know? So, so I, I would ask. I would ask. Like, the, I would, because I would, I, because, because it's a strong observation, and I would just ask, where is where where does the observation come from? That's what I would ask. From from what he puts out. And so, what does he put persona. out? What does he, he puts persona? out? Music. He puts out music that 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 um that gives a, a view of his lifestyle and what he grew up in, and I, I'm not tripping on that, but I'm like repetitively, your your biggest or your you want to be known as this conscious rap, or you you put up this, this music that's supposed to be conscious and supposed to be black empowerment. But then your biggest hits are oh, oh, uh, drink, nigga, drink, the drink. Your biggest hits are what's talking about? bad about it. Nigga. But 
the biggest hits but, are, but, are, but, are, but are, in those biggest hits are you just listening to the hooks or are you listening to the actual lyrics because the actual lyrics ain't about just pulling up and drinking it's a message behind it so honestly oh, to, me, what's, 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 to me what's, 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 to me to me Kendrick Lamar ain't no different than you a dude who grew up in the hood who walked the streets with the hooks the gangsters the the, the drug dealers the murderers and ain't that and pushes a different line and a different message. That's what it is to me. Yeah. yeah the same thing that but you I'm do. Saying, no, so no, no, if you're no. and so in no, no, criticizing no, no. him, you criticizing yourself if that's what you're doing, which to no, me oh, man. that's no, some sucker man. shit. No, because no, you got a dude no, who came man. up in an environment who chose a different path and is spitting you rhymes about said environment he came up in, how he chose a different path. So I don't think nah, that's no know, nerdy oh, hotel oh, oh, oh. shit. Now, I saw that post that you posted, and I totally disagree what with it, bro. I saw the post what you posted post on, post. on Mr. Roger Vaughn. What post I posted? I saw the post, nigga. What don't post talk post to me like you didn't post the shit. What post I posted? Tell it, was people a conversation, that it was a conversation on Roger Vaughn's post. And I was supposed to get off this team. And I said. I saw and what, I you what, said. I said. what you said. is the same what thing that you're alluding said. to right now. What you said that that nigga, is the same thing that you alluded to right now. Nigga, you were a nerdy nigga from Third Ward who hung with drug dealers and killers and rapped and hooped. Nigga, that's you. I, ain't never, but I, I think I'm nerdy. Nigga, that's you. I'm nerdy because I'm, yes. I'm intelligent. Nigga, that's you. You calling him nerdy because he's intelligent? Nigga, that's you. And I'm not saying I'm he's nerdy. Him. I'm not saying he's nerdy because I'm not saying anybody is nerdy because they're intelligent. Thank you. <laughs> but what I am saying is you the nigga you hating on right now. So that's crazy. No, no, no. That's no, what crazy. I'm to me. You are that. What I said, what I said was, niggas be acting like niggas mad at Kendrick. I don't think nobody's mad at Kendrick. To be honest with you, I don't think niggas know who to be mad at, and and I don't think any any of the smoke is directed towards Kendrick Lamar. But Boogie has frozen, and it's late. So this has been another episode of the 16 Shots Podcast with Young James Boogie in AR Dub, and we out.